Hello everybody, welcome back, it is Saturday night once again and we are live once more, the ESFL coming at you, ESFL 92 this evening, the PlayStation Champion, Romero 17 taking on Prime Boxer in our main event. Thank you for joining us on here Twitch and also on YouTube as well, my name is Bailian and we have a great night of fights for you this evening, joined as always on a Saturday night, I am by Mr. Bruce Lee Rob, how are you this evening sir? I am doing very well, Bailey, and thanks for asking. Just excited to see these fights go down and uh, see Romero defend that belt. Plus, we oh. have a real UFC today, so, you know, just full of full of energy and full I, of I, excitement. I think we've had a, a real UFC every every week this in october it's been good it's been, been good. beautiful um but we do have a fantastic night of fights for you this evening if you have never been here before uh we basically have xbox and playstation competitors competing tonight 1v1s not best of three single matches this evening and the champion tonight of the ps4 side of things will be defending his belt in the main event it should be a cracker let's have a quick look at the <laughs> So we can talk you through some of these names that you know and there you have it in the main event Romero 17 taking on Prime Boxer. Great matchup, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But let me just run down some names for the rest of the card. Kinetic NRG is here tonight taking on Yerd, and that's a short notice fill in. Hopefully, that one comes through. But if it doesn't, you know, it'll be sad. But hopefully, we can get Kinetic a fight tonight. We've got a great matchup in Crooks, the veteran, taking on the new guy, Ziafi. Uh, the Canadian top team are showing up tonight in their droves with Bugsy, Gavin, Pressure all here tonight. And there's Rini in there as well. Rock Roman, the vet, Bulldogs up there. And that's all the main card. And then on the undercard, the prelims, we've got Dino showing up against Trixie, Liam against Nathan, and Maceo or Maceo against Glover or Clover, excuse me. And then Chairs on Jim, Elroy's on Leather, Belight. What a night of fights in DD. Uh, Mr. Rob, any names that stand out that you want to just highlight to the people at home that these are ones to watch this evening? Oh, yeah. I mean, you got Chur, a veteran in the prelims. Um, looks like you got Nath making his debut tonight. And then as you move on through the prelims here, Bailey, and you're going to see an OG Bulldog versus CP Pressure. That's going to be a great fight. And I think the key fight for me since you asked is going to be my man Crooks209 versus the young gun, the young prodigy, Zayef, the up-and-coming player. And that's going to really see what's going on in the division and in the rankings because both these guys are incredibly talented so i would have to say that one right there is the most exciting fight in my opinion but i mean how can you beat the championship fight romero 5-0 and undefeated game changer this guy is so talented and uh we saw last week prime boxer just put on a clinic in his fight his stand-up looks mm. absurdly good he's oh, from yeah. fight night and he's bringing his skills over to the ea sports ufc 4 directory he's here to take over he's only lost one time bailey and so it's yeah. going to be a good championship yeah. fight there and he only lost in that tournament that eight man one night tournament that we had to crown the playstation champion it was a tough night and every single one of those were killers and everyone fought really well that evening um it will be interesting to see the elite stand-up that boxer has shown come head to head with romero's well-rounded mma oh, game because yeah. he is very good everywhere romero so that'll be interesting to see if he can compete on the feet as well as many expect he can but if Romero changes it up and see how the course of that fight plays out in the co-main event, if we've got it, we have Kinetic NRG, the man who lost a very close decision in that eight-man tournament to crown Romero champion. Kinetic NRG had fought him in that tournament. Kinetic didn't come out on top. The decision went to Romero. Very, very close fight. And Kinetic almost finished him, but Romero getting a lot of good takedowns and submission attempts in there, as well as landing his own strikes on the feet. So it was a very close matchup. If Kinetic can get a win here and Romero defends, we might see them back in. But first, Kinetic does have a tough test tonight. His original opponent fell out. Now he's taking on, uh, who is it? Yerda. Um, who is a, you know, somewhat of an up-and-comer, not had too many big fights, but has a chance to show himself this evening in that co-main event slot. And then, like you said, Zayaf, again, the up-and-comer, plenty of hype, former champion in the UFL, now in the ESFL, competing as much oh, as yeah. he can. But he's got a tough matchup in Crooks 209 from that Vegas MMA camp. So all throughout the board, good fights leading up to the top three on the bill, and even the rest of the main card there. Of course, Gavin, Bugsy, plenty of the Canadian top team showing up tonight. Three of them. On that main card so you're gonna learn some more about the ctt camp that canadian top team camp this evening wouldn't you say rob oh yeah we're gonna very much learn about that ctt 
and hopefully they don't get beat up and get the CTE, CTE. there, baby. <laughs> there we go. I knew someone was going there with it. All right. Well, there we are. Now, without wasting any more time, I'd say we get on to that first fight of the night. They are ready. We're going to kick things off in the lightweight division here. Let There Be Light taking on Elroy Jet. And of course, Rob, you will see here that it's Let There Be Light is showing up once again with that, um, with that uh, calf pick. Excuse oh, yeah, me. The, right. Yeah, he loves that character. Yeah, I remember him last week. I have the he, he didn't he didn't get the win. Nope. He got pressured pretty badly, but he said he's been working on the game and he's a little bit green still. So today he's gonna really showcase his skills. He said he was a little nervous for his first event, Bailey. I think he he's going against the four horsemen. He said that, yeah. Yeah. He's going against the four horsemen Elroy, also Owen one. So it's a huge opportunity for both these gentlemen to possibly get their first win in the eSports Fight League. And it should be a good one in the light weight division. Here we go. Here we go. Indeed, he obviously that Vanguard pickup by Let There Be Light. He loves that jiu-jitsu game. He did have some sneaky attempts last time. Vanguard's got a lot of subs from a lot of positions that you've got to be careful of. Whoa. With, a, with that Ferguson <laughs> pick. We'll see careful. How it gets on. Yeah, both just ducking straight off the back there. Already Elroy looking to slip to the outside before sending up these strikes. One, two. Lots of footwork already, but stands, plants a body kick, definitely in range for those two follow-up shots to the body. And let there be like using the teeth kick as a good investment, long-term damage to that body off that. And lands again, the straight, and then the lead hook to the body. Elroy leaving himself open for this a couple of times, Rob. Yes, sir, Balian. And uh, right now I'm in advertisement, but I will be right back. Okay, no worries, that's fine. It's Elroy that secures the takedown here. Kind of interesting as we saw, let there be lights gone for that Vanguard pick. The nice, that nice transition off the one fake to half guard gets the momentum sweep. Excuse me, no, goes straight into that rubber guard position. The stack though, countering that immediately from Elroy who's posturing up now trying to land. All coming off the block, we're back to foot on hips here. Gonna pass straight to side control. Good work by Elroy. Beautiful. Obviously wanted this top position, so let's see what he can do with it. Looks like he's just on top. Looking to go full, but no, it's Let There Be Light transitioning up and getting back on top. Good job by Let There Be Light. That's always a little cheeky when your opponent just straight transitions and you transition back. It kind of gives you that window for that easy deny right there, and he gets it, but there's a beautiful use of the rubber guard right there by Elroy, making it look easy where Let There Be Light could not get that transition off. Now back in this top position, and... I don't know. Elroy apparently, you know, he has good takedowns and a very balanced approach to the game. So he, he's showing that now. I'm sure, you know, controlling from top is, you know, is, a, is a good plan for him. He's happy to ride this out, but neither of them have really inflicted any damage yet, Rob. No, not not yeah, not yet. I mean, these little punches aren't doing too much. And with Tony Ferguson, Elroy is going to have a good idea on how to deal with let there be light he has good jujitsu skills he's been holding that top control he tries to posture up and now some body damage but i don't know how much that really does there bailey he does more long term than short term body health but certainly nothing significant um i mean elra got the takedown he's been c controlling for this first round i mean you know nice and easy again nice use of the rubber guard didn't set it up straight to the stack though elroy same escape as last time no attempt to deny that transition from let there be light and uh he's doing a good job defending himself when it comes to the stack position this time doing a good job returning to the stack let's see if he hits the side control gonna let him up here and maybe score some points on the feet before the end of the round yeah we'll see if we're gonna see any stand up from let there be light but no elroy just dumps him again against the cage now though let there be light could use the cage but it seems like this is where let there be light wants to be good use of the on the ground yeah on the ground. I mean, I would say so, but when they were actually on the feet for the first minute of this fight, you're going to give the advantage to let there be light. He landed a couple of good significant strikes to the body with that lead hook and the uh, the straight. So honestly, I mean, the fact that, yeah, there were a few takedowns, Elroy didn't really do anything in terms of damage. I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if let there be light could run away with that round just for those couple of significant strikes he landed on the feet. All right. Here we go. Round number two. Immediately into the clinch they go Dead and now knees. finally let there be light trying to get the takedown tries to jump on the back Balian, but denied elroy good looking out from elroy nice granby roll to escape from that goes forward there's a nice single leg shot attempt again let's see if he jumps up on the back again this time to the cage drags him down nicely little outside foot trip look like there jiu-jitsu 101 now on the back Beautiful. riding 
Let's see who attempts to transition first. And let's see how good their defense is from this backside control position. Nice work there. Let there be light following it right on through to Mount. But the bump straight back from Elroy. And now it is let there be light on top. Slides right into full mount. Whoa. Here we go, though. Sitting up Some from, uh, sort of lock. crazy leg lock from Elroy. There we go, Elroy. Using that leg lock, you get that thing. You need four stars on those... Uh, Unorthodox was that from full mount bay that was from full mount you can I mean, oh my god that's why people don't mount anymore in the competitive jujitsu but it looks like Jeez. he's going to escape from here oh tries to strike as well didn't know that was there but let there be light no problem getting out of that no stamina advantage and they're pro probably well versed in the submission game enough to be able to attack and defend themselves double knees trying to hit the crucifix nothing there the sprawls coming out from alroy that might count as against the cage i'm not sure here because that easy get up is there. This time faking and just riding out this back position. Yeah, just content, landing some damage, trying to get some fakes, and now gets a good transition to backside. Let's see where he goes with it. Bay's gonna hop right on over, take the back nice of job. Mr. Elroy, and he's gotta watch out for that submission again. Not too difficult. Yeah, now they're back in mount. This time gonna straight, no, go straight for the armbar. Excuse me, he's got two minutes to finish it. Here nice stammer advantage. Gonna try and map that little pattern here. Oh, this is close. Elroy's going double on the... He's going... Actually, he's hitting the same right side every single time. He needs to pull fully on those triggers, though. Does let there be light. He's not pulling all the way down on those left and right triggers and following to the corner, which is not giving him the advantage he needs to separate himself on the bars here. He's just half pressing both oh. triggers. Oh. He might get this anyway, oh, Rob. This is insane. He's, he's not even it, following babe. it, but he's still going to get gonna it. He's going to get it, A nice quick tap from the full mount arm by his... Got it! Good oh. work by Let There Be Light, man. Gets the sub that he wanted, and I'll tell you what, he'll be happy with a victory in the ESFL. Beautiful submission with his uh, jujitsu vanguard For pick, sure. you said, right? That was a vanguard I mean, pick, yeah. I mean, it was it was kind of brave of, of Elroy to want to take it to the ground, but if you look at the, the scout report on Elroy, it says that he is a grappler. <laughs> definitely something he probably wanted to do in this fight got a few takedowns but ultimately let there be light it was a fairly even you know jujitsu match it wasn't like one of them was massively controlling the other or not letting the other one have their opportunities to escape position to defend themselves even set up a few sweeps it was competitive very much a stalemate almost rob i mean it wasn't the most exciting fight up to that point, right but we got that mount position definitely. for the second time controlled from the top sunk the armbar and he only needed one attempt to get the fight finished so Good, good, good job. Let there be light. Gets it done. Gets it finished. Yeah, not only did he get a submission victory over somebody in the esports fight league, but it was over another grappler and playing Tony El Kakui Ferguson. True. I mean, how much better and how much sweeter can it be, Bay? I mean, just a quick cold knockout. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it was a good performance. Like we said, that was his game plan. That's his bread and butter. That's his strength. He, if you're picking a jiu-jitsu guy and you want to take the Vanguard, I mean, best case scenario, you get a submission. That's exactly what he did. It was a nice dominant submission from an aggressive position from the full mount. It wasn't like a cheeky little Kimura from half guard or like a snap and arm bar on, which is still pretty good, you know, from guard. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you take full mount, impose your will, you know, and, and go after the submission attack from top, you know, that's that's you looking to finish the fight. You know, that's not you being active in your defensive position. So props to let there be light. Gets his first win in the ESFL, comes back after his uh, poor show, not poor show, but defeat last week. Um, said he improved a few things, kept himself out of trouble, gets the win. So good job to let there be light right there. All right, there we go. Uh, right, um, moving swiftly on. Uh, we seeing some big names that we know already, Rob, and that we've got Chur taking on Honest Jim in our next matchup here. Ooh, that should be good. Chur, you know he's grapple heavy, good sub game. He likes the pressure on the feet. Currently ranked 16 in the ESFL, 1-0, undefeated against Honest Jim. Balanced, very good at the counter game, and also has some polished grappling here, Bailey, and ranked 17. So these guys are so close in ranking right now. Also 1-0, so these guys are going to try to get that 2-0 streak, and one of them's going to go home upset with that breadstick. And we're going to find out right now in the welterweight division. Looks like George St. Pierre is being locked in for Mr. Nice. Chura. Good viable pick for sure i'd love to see some more Col colby picks you know he's the number two rated yeah. guy at welterweight he's yeah there we go i was gonna say he's got oh. some great stats um so there we see it the colby covington pick right there deserves a little bit of a boost i think to maybe um 
punch speed. Uh, maybe, you know, the head movement certainly a little bit as well. He's very, very offensive. Yeah, he's a sick boxer. Good. He is a good boxer, yeah. Well, he's a sneaky boxer as well. Very loose. Yeah. Very loose boxer. Right. Um, Those overhands are crazy. Yeah, and he's got bah, that, that gas bah. tank, so he throws it out there. But that's neither here nor there because it is not. Colby we're talking about right now. It's Honest Jim versus Cher. And like you said, Cher with the pressure and a grapple heavy game. Let's see if he works it in there. And Jim, you know, more of a counter fighter, but we'll see what he decides to do. He's taking Covington here. So we'll see what he goes. He tries to hit that one, two, three to the body. He doesn't get it, but power straight through with the double as Cher steps in there, wasting no time, literally 10 seconds into the fight. And he's already got this top position, Rob. Yeah, that's a big statement right off the bat, putting Cher on his back. And now on top with Colby Covington. Looks like Church trying to fake down a couple times and get that sweep. But nope. Honest Jim's not having none of it, Bay. We don't have any audio for this one, do we? Just to check. It's not just me. We do not. Okay, we're fine. Uh, anyway, right. We're Hopefully. fine in the library. We're fine, but there we go. We'll keep it the entertainment as much as we can. Chair deciding now after that beautiful sweep to posture up from this half guard position, raining down half stamina wise with his ground up pound here. Jim staying nice and calm, gets denied though, but trying to bump back easy there after a nice fake for the full guard. But Chair wastes no time strain transitioning right back into that full mount, but unable to keep it. Jim bumping down now, double fakes and hits the uh, the underhook sweep, but doesn't get it. Rob right there gets denied. Good control by Chur. Chur reading his opponent well and staying on top. Now has the backside position. Good job, but even a better job by Arnold Jim not allowing his back to be sunk in on by that right leg of Chur. Now he's back up, Baliance to his feet. But watch out for the slam and. You know, he's done, both these guys are doing a very good job at denying each other. Yeah, this time, though, shifts the momentum forward, drives the head to the mat, follows him down, back on the back here. Jim gets Ooh. straight back to his feet. Oh, beautiful work. Takes him down now. Big slam. Yeah, and that'll do a little damage to the body as well, but he takes advantage of the stamina loss from that takedown. He had to try two in a row there, burn some stamina, and Jim gets that backside sit out from that position, that beautiful switch, now in top position, working for his own oh, ground and pound, no. deciding to grab the crucifix here, rather than posture up and deal damage, he's going to deal as much as he can from these side control, and crucifix position, this is bad, Rob, Big oh elbows. my god, look at oh, this, vicious Chur's elbows. got move. Oh, man, oh, he's done, what? that's I all mean, she wrote, baby, he didn't really try to get out of that position, Rob, I don't really understand what happened, yeah, he was just eating about three or four big, vicious elbows. He got rocked and didn't really adjust or didn't make a move. And then neon belly for Honest Jim. And then that right hand, boom, put his lights out, Le Bailey. And wow. I mean. Or left hand. A left hand. But, I mean, Chad didn't really look like he tried to transition out of that crucifix position. Like, did he try one attempt to that? I didn't see him. Maybe he was trying to build up that GA and just kind of miscalculated his uh, approach. I mean, maybe. I mean, Ch Chur's obviously a vet. We've seen him fight many, many times. A, a great grappler in his own right. It's just kind of strange that he decided to not transition from that position. I mean, maybe, like you said, he misread or maybe he's, he's fought, you know, uh, Jim's Colby before and feels like that crucifix position is a position that's really hard to get out of and, and maybe felt like the fight was over once he, he got put there. Um, but I don't know if he even denied one transition out of that position i think he denied i think he got denied right he tried to transition out got denied and then just started getting elbows rained upon him <laughs> i think <laughs> well i mean in either case then it's a good finish by this gym gets the ground and pound <laughs> position with colby little back and forward exchange on the feet nothing too you know telling much more of a grappling fight again as we had in the first fight but Jim, with that takedown, secures the finish. Had to defend some of those takedowns from Chao. Chao being really aggressive with those back uh, those back takedowns, those, those suplexes, those front takedowns. Uh, I guess I don't know what you call those there, but it's like a... <laughs> I like that. It's a takedown. The frontal takedowns. The front takedowns. We've got the music coming in now. <laughs> Although the, the back audio... Like, right, anyway, the point is, good performance by Jim. Uh, especially, like you said, that's number 16, number 17. I mean, Chao not necessarily fighting his best fight there. Uh, this is where I want to get an interview. I want to know what what, what happens to Chur. Apparently, Chur says in his chat he couldn't move. So, Ooh, a game yeah, glitch. I don't know. Maybe, Unfortunate maybe, situation. Yeah. Anyway, what did you think? Uh, you know, I thought it was a close contest between two guys that were looking to get the takedown. They were back and forth, both denying each other very well. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes... When you're fighting in the USFL, you get caught in a specific position like the crucifix, which is definitely 
detrimental to your chances of winning. And if you get stuck there and maybe there's some weird wonky thing going on and it just an unfortunate, you know, unfortunate situation for anyone to be in when you're in the crucifix. It's tough, especially against high level players. And then he just got some elbows and, you know, rained down. And, you know, it, it was it was a good contest, though, before that. You know, it was very back and yeah, forth. Cher will be back. Cher will be back. He's been here before. You know, he's not going anywhere. He's definitely... Better than ever, babe. Better, better than ever. Better than, better than ever. I don't know. Cher's been pretty good in, in recent moments. But some, yeah, like you said, sometimes you do get stuck in a position, especially in the ESFL. Right. You know, time sort of slows down or speeds up in a weird way. And you get a little desperate, a little... <laughs> Crazy, so maybe he, yeah, maybe he just mistimed or, or misread what he was trying to do, and thumbled his sticks. Right. If you got, I don't know, we'll let Chess say it. anyway. There's a win right there for um, Honest Jim, who honestly got a good win. So there we are. Right, we're going to hey. keep things moving here. Uh, next up, we've got we the go. first of the EK, EK uh, men competing this evening, Mr. EK Maceo. I believe his name is. There's some music pumping in the background, so we'll move on over to this. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's slapping in here, Bay. Okay. It is, isn't it? Let's, let's just turn that down a little bit there. Bit too, <laughs> bit too intense. All right. We need too much of that. And there they go. ICB Clover is the opponent. They're matched up. And it looks like Clover locking in that Volkanovsky pick there, Rob. Right. Clover locking in that Volkanovsky pick. Let's see what EK Maceo is going or who he's going to select. And. Uh, this EK Maceo guy, 0-1, so is ICB, both 0-1, both yet to taste victory in the esports fight league. However, Maceo is aggressive, killer instinct, and he is fearless. And ICB Clover is very adaptable. He starts very strong, very fast, and his ground game is absolutely elite, is what these uh, five fans are saying. So this fight should be very telling to who is you know ready for that next level. And they desperately both need a win here. And EK, you know they produce solid fighters with solid ground games. So this should be an interesting matchup. Yeah, yeah, it should be indeed. Um, they did have a little connection trouble before this one. So I'm hoping that uh, everything goes okay once the fight starts. It is 3-0 right there to Masio in previous fights. But that could have just been disconnects because of that aforementioned connection trouble. So we've got no crowd now. Uh, at least I don't hear anything. And um, Dang it. I know, Rob. We want the crowd. We want the winner. We hear him get us pumped. Need some energy. I know, and it's right? a five round, Bailey. Oh, These yeah. guys need to read the rules. Uh, no. Well, I'm sure they had to restart enough times that they probably made a mistake. But the right in the middle, like we said, trading. ICB content to throw hands with that beautiful aloe pick. Nice job stuffing that single leg takedown. Returns Ooh. one knee. And it's just oh. a left hook nonstop from Maceo right here. Every combination oh. leading with that left hook, Rob. Man, I know. Maceo coming out strong with Aldo, throwing some good punches. Like, I mean, like the, what was, okay, go ahead, babe. <laughs> I was just waiting for it. <laughs> uh, they're both trading back and forth. Yeah, I mean, ICB definitely going to the body, firing a home right there for their lead left hand. Going to have to be careful with that knee that's come up the middle a few times here. But Ooh. the left hook from Clover now working against that lead hook. And Maceo's trying to throw out the pull counter. Just missed time there. He's finding a home for that jump switch kick to the body. But Clover's still trying to stand and plant a little bit more dip in his head preemptively. That's not going to get him away from that hook if that comes out again. But there's a nice one, two, three right down the middle. Well controlled by Maceo, who's now content, looks like, to take some on his Ooh. block, Rob, and give it hey. back when he finds his oh. timing. Oh, beautiful. Man, Maceo is looking good. That jab straight, leaning straight, head kick is so beautiful. And he just landed it perfectly. Man, this guy's got some striking, and he's really utilizing that head movement yeah, he very is well. Definitely deciding to go on the counter offensive here as Clover tries to keep pushing that pressure, dominate and dictate the pace and center of the octagon here. Nice one, two, but Woo! pull count lands nothing. Nice hook. Hook. Right hook. Look at him just timing him, Rob. He's not trying to land more than one shot. He's just trying to intercept Clover here. Oh, yeah, intercepting he is doing. And I was going to say the pre. Oh, big left hook. Hold on. Beautiful job getting out of the way. The full oh, uppercut, oh. though. There it is, though. Doesn't dodge that one. And now dropped against He's the cage. Bloody. Flashing like a set of traffic lights all over the place here. Breaks from the clinch. Just starting to step back with four hooks, Rob. But the block is still Man. there for Clover, who's throwing back right now. There is a huge stand-up advantage right here. It's very clear. EK Maceo is dominating Clover on the feet. I mean, look at that head health. Ladies and gentlemen, at the top right of your screen, I mean, he's getting bodied. Yeah. And what I was going to say earlier when I stumbled is the pre-fight stats or accolades or whatever you want to say said that ICB was the fast starter and EK has been like a lightning bolt so far in this fight.
Yeah, I think they, they both have. You know, they, they've just, just content to meet each other in the middle rather than either of them give ground. But Clover now with the takedown after getting dropped in this first round. Going to test the ground game early here of Maseo, who's denied two transitions there. Excuse me. A little hiccup there. And, uh, well, Clover's still holding position there despite that sweep. But let's see what he can do on the ground here. Look at this blood everywhere, Rob, already. Oh, it's a nasty mess. The cleanup crew is going to have their hands full after this. And well, Clover did a great job getting this fight to the ground to try to slow that pace down and possibly get to round number two and clear its head and try to figure out how to deal with this firecracker that is EK Maseo. He's throwing these beautifully timed hooks and just standing right in the face and just landing nasty combinations and had, has almost done enough damage to finish this fight. So round number two... It's going to be very interesting to see how our boy ICB uh, adjusts here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Volkanovski is going to recover fairly well in between the round. You get a little bit of time to just reset, re-enter from a fresh perspective. But it was all the pressure that Clover was, you know, utilizing. It ultimately led to his defeat right there. He's still doing it. He's just walking into these shots. He's thinking offensive first here, whereas Masai is thinking defense first. Oh, there, beautiful. Bang. One, two, three, as he tries to throw that lead body oh. kick again oh. right there. Just super close. Leaning shots. And Clover needs to start trying to get a little less aggressive and try and time his shots more than just wing them out here, bro. I think ICB Clover is just standing too much in front of his opponent. He needs to come in, come out, use that nice you know, in and out movement, use some footwork from Volkanovski. And he's kind of just standing there getting popped. Like right here, double uppercut oh, land. Yeah. And he just, oh, oh that may be, be it. it. That is probably going to be it right there. Nice uppercut to finish. Oh, he's no. framing. Oh, survive, oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> um, really right there. I mean, he stepped out from that clinch position and just threw a one-two, and Maceo just threw double uppercuts. You know, those moved his head off while he threw them, so those those linear strikes just getting beaten by those uppercuts, Ooh. just doing a lot more damage. So, Whoa. Clover, oh, how did there that it is. Him out? I don't know, Rob. Maybe Are the, you serious? The range, I think, was probably not, you know, at 100%. He just ducked a head kick and overhanded him. Yeah, well, that's 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 you. That's UFC three Bruce Lee. Bro. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Oh, nasty left oh, hook. Man. It's just one oh, lean. Shot oh, Bay. Yeah, this I, is target practice for Maceo at this point. I mean, Clover, like you oh, said, my goodness. He, he's not moving his feet right now, which is what's kind of got him in this position. Anyways, his contentment to plant when he he should be on his bike a little bit more, perhaps. There's a body kick, but that's got him into trouble previously as well. The straight left's out of range, and he, you know, Aldo has a bit of a reach advantage in this situation, and Maceo's definitely used it as much as he could in this fight. Now just pouring at him with the jab, trying to set up that one, two, three that he dropped him with previously. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh, another nice. right hand. Oh. Gee, oh, he loves the snap jab into the lead head kick. Oh, it's nice. In full mount right now, pounding away. Probably going to get this finish as Issei Maceo, and that makes him one and one, picking up his first win in the ESFL is EK's Maceo right there. Good performance, Rob. Oh, man, that was one of the most dominant performance I, performances I've seen in a while, and Maceo looked like he was having fun out there, throwing out those leaning straights, those leaning jabs, and just, just constantly rocking ICB Clover. Clover really never had a chance in that fight. EK Maceo came out as we got this sweet music in the background. I'm digging. I mean, EK Maceo is just the truth, man. This guy's a great fighter, and he is fearless. He's got killer instinct, and he is aggressive. And I cannot wait to see EK Maceo compete again, Bailey. And what an exciting, dominant performance by my man, Maceo. I mean, it was certainly a very, very good fight. And, uh, you know, it's not that he had to overcome adversity, but he definitely had to deal with a pressure fighter. And, you know, that's that's not something that's necessarily easy to do, you know, especially at this level. It's all well and good in ranked. You can fight those players that are just going to run non-stop towards you. But in the ESFL, people have a little bit more of a technical, you know, proficiency to their aggression. And we saw some of that right there. But Maceo did a good job quelling the pressure, countering, being comfortable enough to fight a little bit more defensively than his opponent, who was really trying to push the aggression and using that head movement to set up the counters, to land big shots, to get the head health you know, to the point where he could trade comfortably rather than have to rely on the slips. And then from there, he started using his jab to set up everything else. We saw some beautiful head kicks off of jabs and same side. He was 
throwing one shot at a time and just timing them perfectly. He did that great sequence where he just went sort of jab, lead hook, straight, and then the question mark kick. So his timing was really good. Um, made easier by the fact that Clover oh, was yeah. obviously just pushing forward constantly, but he was able to deal with that in a calm and technically proficient way to secure the win and the knockout. So, yeah, like you said, great job by Maceo there tonight. Absolutely extraordinary. <laughs> I can say that for sure. Yes, indeed. All right, uh, moving swiftly on. Um, let's take a look at the fight card. For those of you who have not seen it yet, perhaps you're just joining us this evening is is the esports fight league 92 esfl 92 romero 17 defending his playstation title against the up and coming prime box are going to be a great fight there in the main event later on this evening we just saw there in the bottom left of your screen in the prelims maceo taking on icb's clover maceo picking up the win right there and we're moving on now to liam and nathix or Nathan's, excuse me, uh, who is making his debut tonight in the SFL. And after that, we've got Dino and Trixie before we move on to the main card. Rob, what can you tell us about these fighters, especially this debuting Nathan here? Well, I can tell you this is his first fight in the ESFL, and he's absolutely comfortable everywhere, and he's very confident. He's been training hard. He's ready for this big step up. And, and uh, you know, he's going to be going against Pirate Kip, and Pyrate apparently has some elite head movement, but he loves to brawl. So he likes to use that elite head, head movement in the pocket and throw and slug big left hooks, right hooks, uppercuts, overhands. And he's also strong in all areas and all facets of the game. Currently ranked 39th, 0-1. So, you know, he's looking for a win as well. And Nanth is also 0-0. So he's looking for a win. Everyone's looking for a win. And this is going to be... Uh, a great showcasing of a, a player that, you know, to see how he deals with those ESFL butterflies. Can he overcome it and get this first win, or will he be pirated down there? Pirated. Uh, Balian. Pyroclasted. Pyrotechnica. <laughs> Saying words now, mate. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. The fight is ready, he says. Um, I agree. That's a great analysis right there. Nate, like you said, is making his debut. He's a wild card, apparently, uh, which, as we all know, Ooh. is the best thing to be. Um, let's see if yeah. Pyrate can bring that elite head movement that he loves to claim that he that he has. Or we've seen flashes of it. Um, this is going to be another case of, you know, two people who might be applying pressure and seeing who can deal with it, Rob, who can be slicker and... Um, not necessarily calm under fire, but, you know, there's a difference between wanting to be the aggressor, but also sometimes being willing to let your opponent make the first move and the first mistake. Right, Rob? Yeah, and that could go both ways because sometimes I find myself when I'm in a ranked match, I'll be waiting a little too much and then my opponent starts to get comfortable and I start getting damaged and then I start and then I and then I, you know, make that adjustment where I'm going out there. And I'm being first. You know, you hear it in the real UFC. You got to be first. You got to be first. Because sometimes it really helps to be the more active fighter, especially in this stage of the game Ready. and this patch. So hopefully fight. these guys know that. And, you know, they come out and they start like our boy EK Maceo in that last yeah. fight. But here we go, Bay. I want to see this. I love the, the pick matchup here. We don't see this very often. Connor be Ferguson here. And there's Pyrate stepping forward, leading with that straight left and following up with that lead right hand as well. Oh. Oh, oh, here comes the shot. Nice. Beautiful sprawl. denial sprawl right there, Bailey. And now against the cage they go. Yeah, beautiful cage get up straight to the back. Love it. Tripping straight back down. That is someone who has practiced that sequence many times there, Rob. Smooth as butter on the back. Stamina disadvantage, but he's probably going to just hold this position until he can regain it. And then he might look to transition or he might look to counter what Pirate does to get out of here. He might be content just to ride for as long as he can. Yeah, and that first transition, I think, was denied pretty nicely. I think it was a left left flick. Nath still holding the back, just peppering him with these nice little shots on the left cheek of the beautiful face of Connor, and the ref's going to stand him up. It works out. Yep. It back to the feet, back to Connor's world, Balian. 
Here comes Nath. I think uh, Nath, yeah, Pirates. a bit too slow to act there. I mean, quite content to hold position, but obviously the ref will stand you up Ooh. if you're not trying to do something as that one, too. This time leading with the right hand. He double flicks out to the left-hand side. Beautiful job pulling guard, but nicely read by Pirate. He's going to try and settle here and land some of that offense because Nath doing a good job avoiding and, uh, and getting these takedowns in his grappling position secure. Nice uppercut, though. Most definitely. And it also looks like uh, Nath is very adept at his movement and he's gonna stay off that center line so he can't get hit by that power one two by mr pirate kip oh and there it is again though oh these straights are landing hard yeah that left is is money right now and you know ferguson will recover well this is fine you're making him work beautiful nice. job there i mean that was lovely shot in for the double finish with the trip half guard on top two minutes left and yeah like you said he was getting correct but ferguson will recover well and, uh, you know, you're making Kip work as part of the regular here, which is always a good thing in the first round. Yeah, most definitely nullifying that out of the gate perk. He still has another round where he's going to get that stamina advantage, uh, Conor McGregor, that is. But yeah, beautiful job by Nath on top with Tony Ferguson. But wow, what a sweep by Pyrite. Or Pyrite. And now he's on top, Balian. And there's a minute 14 left to go. And it's looking pretty good. Back yeah, to the feet they go. A good job patient, patiently waiting on that and exploding. Only kept him down for a minute there. Like you said, back on the feet. Nice dip. With Pirate, he's been leading with that left hand all night. Nate really trying to put the pressure on with the 1-2 here, Rob. But he keeps walking into these strikes. He is doing a good job staying on his bike and dipping out. But it's constantly to the right-hand side. Gets under the lead hook. Nice job. Love the way he's bailing on those. Good defense. That was a cool though. animation. Yeah, nice little late denial. There's the slip right there. The lead up. Sorry, the rear up got landing as well on the chin. And Nate's going to have to be careful. He can't eat those all night. Oh. Yeah, Nate, Nate has been eating that straight and eating that rear uppercut by Pyrite, and he's been just getting damaged so heavily to the head. It's not looking good in round number one. I gotta give this round to Pyrite, landing some big shots. I, I would say, yeah, I, I agree with you there, but you know, that's what you can expect against the Conor McGregor that first round, and you know, it depends how good the submission game is here of Mr. Nate. He might be looking late for that, grab this stamina advantage, but it's fairly even across the board and stamina coming into the second. The Ooh. damage inflicted by Nate is pretty minimal, and Kip has done a lot to that head health right there to Nate. And he has, and it's interesting. I'm surprised uh, Nate is not slipping more because I haven't really seen oh, that's bad. Pyrite throwing any a lot of hooks. I mean, he is throwing a couple here or there, but it's mostly the straight and the uppercut that's landing. Oh, oh again! One, two. He's just walking into it, Rob. You know, he's too focused on that aggression. He's, he's just stepping <laughs> forward. He's his blocker. Yeah, he's just not able to stop this offensive unfortunately right there he's got to get on his game he's got to take this seriously and like you said put your hands up at least in those situations and this is a debut for him so who knows what sort of emotions he's feeling right now in his first esfl match that is nath over there oh. playing a Tony person oh, eating a huge uppercut for pyrite he's just in the pocket here you know and he's not slinging back he's he's in a bad spot exactly where he does not want to be in this fight He's trying to get that takedown desperately, and Pyrite's there to defend it. And Pyrite, oh, big body shots by Pyrite. That was better by Nate, though. He returned with a straight lead hook. You know, that's going to stop those combos, but he did rip the body hard and in the pocket again, trading with, with Pyrite's Conor McGregor. This not is, this a good idea. Not the best thing, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Somehow! Oh, I can't believe he landed That it. lead uppercut, Bailey, and lands. Off the right hand as well. Trying to step forward, double knees. Now he's going to keep his hands up again. Stepping straight into it, Rob. Oh, no block up again. But he's defending these nicely. Oh, he's got a slip. He's not moving his head either. He framed those nicely and then he just did a slip. Good deny right there yeah, by Pyrite. Good work by Pyrite. And I like how Pyrite's constantly got back to the feet at the end of every grappling exchange. He's just like, nah. Ooh. Back on the feet. Yeah. Nice knee to the body there, though. By Nath, who's got to find more home for things like that. He keeps slipping out, you know, a lot of these major lunges, but they do cost a lot of stamina, which then puts him standing square in front with no stamina. Nice knees. Nice uppercut. Nate might be getting a little comfortable here. Oh, these are pretty good. As well. Gets a clinch position again on back. the back. Again, 51 seconds. Nice deny by Pyrate. 
If we could get this to round number three, that would that would be very interesting. Oh, luck is so low, though. It, <laughs> oh, it is. Chopping the body there, nice. Oh, he gets the takedown. Another single. All right, so he is going to be able to ride this through to round three, most likely here. And we'll probably come through with a Samurai advantage. He's at a disadvantage right now. We'll see what it's happening come round three. But, I mean, the damage inflicted by Kit in that round, Rob. He landed some beautiful combinations with the straight left and the uppercut, like you said. I mean, that was that was Kip's round for sure. Oh, yeah. He has Nath hurt and fragile going into round number three. Um, What perks does Tony have? Does he have... He does Any have health higher. perks? Um, nothing that's going to help him. Rec no. Like recharger. He might have recharger, actually. So. I think he does. I don't, I don't remember. Oh, but oh. that's not going to matter if you're getting an uppercut right yeah, off the rip. Yeah, especially if you're in the pocket trading like that again. And you're leading with the jab. These are things oh. that Nathan oh. should not be doing. And oh, Ooh, vicious strikes. The block vicious right strikes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, indeed. And he's almost oh. circled straight into that. Again, he's trying to jab whilst Kip is throwing that straight left. And I know it's hard to get away from, but he's got to find ways to do it. Nice front kick. He needs to stay away from that boxing. I like that. That was a beautiful takedown attempt. Gets the clinch here. I'd like to see him, yeah, snap a takedown from this clinch position. Doesn't get it back in. The one. And then the four. The hook follows up. Nice slip. Good shots by Nat. Catches him with the lead hook there. He's got the stamina to just push and the confidence oh. in it. Oh, rocked oh. by a jab, though. Ouch. Oh, this is this man is so bad for Nate. He's gonna have to find a takedown, or Kip's gonna take his head off. <laughs> this movement is sort of keeping him in there. Oh, that left so close from ending the fight right there. And that's it. Again, big shot. I mean, that's the difference in those exchanges for the whole story of the fight. First of all, congratulations to Pirate, clean finish in the third round. But those exchanges there, you know, Nate stepping in with the jab. Pyrite planting with the lead uppercut. You know, you're just going to lose that 95% of the time. If, if you're stepping in with the jab and your opponent's throwing that lead uppercut, especially if you're in a planted position, you're not going to interrupt it right there, you see? And, and a maximum vulnerability because he'd already thrown the jab trying to follow up with the right hand. It's just not really favorable exchanges and just putting himself in bad positions against, you know, into his opponent's strengths with that Conor McGregor pick, Rob. Definitely. Um, Pyrite came out there. He was throwing some aggressive one-two combinations and really trying to throw that rear uppercut, like you said. And uh, unfortunately, Nath just unable to make that adjustment to, you know, throw any slips out there. Um, he was utilizing that those pivot movements, those L1 lunges very well. But unfortunately, it was just survival mode. Most of that fight after round number one and two, he just ate so much damage to the head. And he did get a couple of takedowns early, Bailey, and uh, he just wasn't able to hold down Pirate. Pirate did a good job getting back to the feet countless times and getting the fight where he wanted it, utilizing those out-of-the-gate perks in rounds number one and two and just doing so much damage on the feet. And, uh, yeah, what a big win for Pirate. I mean, he fought very well. He did. He did indeed. And, yeah, there was no messing around on the ground. It was just up every time straight back up no postured up ground and pound just straight back to the feet uh which is definitely what you want to do against someone you know with with tony you can get wrapped up you can get caught up you can get you know submissions attempts come on you from every position if you're in their guard if you're in their half guard if you're in their mount they can still bang out a submission attempt on you so you know just get straight back to your feet do what you gotta do kip certainly did that tonight he did so some really clean crisp striking nice timing to intercept the incoming offense right there very confident to sit and plant and just wait and just throw that straight left or that lead uppercut so he didn't feel like he had to put the pressure on too much but um definitely did some 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 clean boxing on display right there so there we have it perfect right mm -hmm. um on to the next fight and the final fight this is the featured preliminary fight of tonight's Ooh. ESFL 92 card. We have the returning veteran in Dino MMA, who is a very, very talented fighter. Not always able to put it together, unfortunately, this season. You know, two and three right now. But he's taking on another up-and-comer in Trixie. Great matchup at life. Yeah, most definitely. You got El Dino, who's ranked 22. He's two and three. He's... Apparently a very creative striker, very patient, very comfortable everywhere. And he has an opportunity here to go against ranked number six, Trixie. 
who's three and one. He's got a super high level and understanding of the movement and the footwork. He's very skilled in all attributes or skilled in all areas. And he's super. I remember this before. We laughed about it, but it really came to fruition in the fight, Trixie. Or excuse me, Bailey is he's dangerous even when he's Coming losing. Up, so when he's down and he's out, he's still there and he's Dustin still extremely Poirier. dangerous and extremely focused. And we saw that last week or a week before. He came out yeah. like a banshee when he was down. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And this should be a great <laughs> fight, fight right here. Like you said, Trixie ranked number six in the ESFL. El Dino yeah. ranked number 22. Top that's 10. Just, you know, that's how Frank good Dino Frank. is and his potential. But unfortunately, he's two and three this season. Right, unable to Dustin make the win Conor happen. So this is a great opportunity for Dino right here to, to jump and take out a top 10 guy in Trixie. Since your guy Poirier has won nine fights. And here we go. And uh, this Liam Link isn't looking for me. To win over Conor McGregor can be life-changing. We saw what it did for Habib Nurmagomedov. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Did he change the sofa on the feet? Dino is doing a good job. Patient trying to land that 1-2-3. You have seen him go on a run after going up to 155. He's pouring with the jab. Nice front kick to the body. Real good investment in that body damage. Again, a Conor McGregor player. And there's a front kick to the face from Trixie. Nice cheeky lead hook as well. Another lead hook. And Dino and rolling with it, coming back with that lead hand counter of his own. It seemed like Tricky, Trixie was putting on that pressure, back to the well but his opponent right was uh, Dino MMA was responding pretty nicely. And now here comes Dino in a couple shots there. He's one, two, three, the stump, face front kicks. Trixie's had some more success in the first minute of this fight. That one, two, cracks him though. Losing all that block and then cool counter on the third strike in the combination. Reading his one, two, three, that's come out from Dino. Beautiful time in the match. And both men planting and trading the lead hook. This is a good fight so far. Both guys trying to get that advantage, spinning each other out, Bay. Just tell the level of striking here on these players. You know, this is why it's the featured prelim. Nice one, two, using that pose of distance that's inside. But the lead hook, rear uppercut comes off the block, and the return from Trixie as well comes off the block as well. Man, these guys are playing a dangerous game in there. Yeah, Trixie double jabbing there, but stuffed by Dino, who stepped in with a lead uppercut. So Trixie's going to make an adjustment to this range because he's been double jabbing nicely, but now Dino steps inside. Inside this hook range, he doesn't want to be pumping out that he's down. Definitely not, and Dino throwing that one-two out there, having some success, and I've been pretty impressed with Trixie's uh, Superman punches. They've been pretty nice and pretty pinpoint out there. Nice slip, though. He fires the left hand and gets back to his teeth. Whoa! Nice. Beautiful. A beautiful time in. Yeah, super quick. Use the seat to push him on the outside with that black inner doctagon. Has the grapple advantage because he's now back to the cage. Ducks right under that double leg and now in this full mount position, Rob. Yeah, this is good for Trixie, most definitely. Dustin Poirier, pretty good top game. Conor McGregor, not so much great from the bottom. Great denied. 45 seconds left. Great denied by Dino, and Trixie tried to mount. You know, he was in that full mount, tried to push up. Dino denied, and now works his way back to full guard. Got 30 seconds left. Foot on the hips, he's back on the feet, Rob. Beautiful job, and tries to get a spinning elbow. Swifts on the right hand. Now they're just letting it fly in the phone booth. Right. Lead hook. Working. Woo! Block. Oh, a huge block there. Oh, what a oh, shot. Beautiful. Simple. Right hand upstairs. And easy one, two. Head kick lands at the end of the round for Trixie. What a back and forth first round, run. Yeah, definitely good. Trixie probably has the advantage here. Very technical fight. Both guys playing footsies pretty well. Right, now we check out some of the action Trading. That There's that beautiful round. Superman punch that Trixie really landed. Hands down as That well. was so I mean, nice. And he followed up with a 1-2 as well. And at the end, that 1-2 head kick. Both displayed great yeah, Trixie clips. landed a few big shots. They both did. They're both doing a good job muting each other and stepping inside each other's ranges. Trixie had some great success with those front kicks, but then Dino was closing that distance. Good pace to the fight. So straight left, money from Trixie. Straight left lands and steps in with a straight left lead hook. So he's doubling up the same side punches. There it is, straight left. Lead uppercut, now putting on the pressure. Dino getting underneath that final strike, though. Yeah, he's definitely setting up a lot of his shots with that, that straight left, babe. Oh! Nice high kick. Careful, oh, he's throwing those kicks so McGregor, close. I mean, he's the left hook. Dipped just through that left hand over the top there as well. It's nasty. 
but I think oh, Trips has got a little confidence in the speed of Dustin Poirier's oh, straight left. Straight comes Dino face. though, trying to put some pressure on. Whiffs there. Oh, fakes the kick to the body, comes up to the top of the head, kick down with a 1, 2, 3 to drop him. Beautiful work from Dino. The Tripsy pull counters, fires back with a straight left, straight lead hook again. Oh Immediately takes the momentum away from Dino there, who did a beautiful job, like you said. Bang! Full advantage, capitalizing on that whiff, but there we go, Rob, and he slips as well. This is a wild fight, these guys are so good. Both making some sick plays, and there you go, Trixie trying the same thing that Dino did earlier, and then so back and forth, what a fight. Copycat each other right here, trying to rub it back in their face, a little shoe shy and nice lead up a cut. Lands right there, the nose of Trixie nice and bloody, stutter step slips the left hand straight over the top, the one-two breaks the block, the lead hook with the pressure, Pushing Don't him right back now, pouring him with that lead hand. Oh. But beautiful jump, pull counter, and that's the left really hook. Drops Trixie, who's back to the feet now, though. Holy smoke, takedown attempt, but no. Nice Dino's having none of it. Good takedown defense, hands a vicious rear uppercut. And now Trixie is more damaged than Dino. That power of Conor McGregor paying its due. Catch a kick, nice outside leg sweep there. And you know, it's that, it's that rear uppercut from Dino and that straight leg from Trixie right now. Both their best shots. And just inches away from landing one of those oh, big man. right hands. This fight is heating up here, Bay. He's blocked. He's really picked Getting up lower and lower. There's that swing so kick again. Digging the body. To find himself in the pocket. Both dipping, trying to put that left hand. There's a rear up. Oh, oh. Hook. oh. Shot. Uh -oh. on top. Going to try and pound him out for the finish here. Block is low, and he oh, is Ground and pound when you're underneath and you're hurt. It's so hard if you make one so mistake. Sometimes it's over. Man. And what a fight. So what a fight he did. Man. And I thought he did a good job of doing just man. that. Man, that was a prelim, featured prelim for a reason, ladies and gentlemen. We know why they put that on for us. They fought their hearts out. And man, that was some crazy stuff going down. Bailey, did you see Dino in the midst of the action, <laughs> in range of punches, fake the low kick and then hit him high? I mean, that was incredible. That was beautiful. And that was off a, a, a whiff head kick right there. You know, like, um, Trixie whiffed that head kick. And so then, yeah, he was right back in range. Fake the body kick and then threw the head kick. Really nice career, job and that to set that up straight up. But one it was of the such a competitive fight. The such, a, such a back and forth Ladies fight. And you got a feel right there for Dino just a little bit because Trixie going into that fight, number sixth guy in the world, Dino the number 22nd guy, Trixie three and one this season, Dino two and three, now Dino two and four and it just goes to show, you know, he's fighting against a top 10 guy, he can compete with these top 10 guys, he had his moments in that fight, he had him hurt in that fight. But, you know, you can't win them all when someone's going to go home with the W. Trixie getting it done, showing why he's so good because he's able to win those crazy fights. But unfortunately for Dino, that is another loss in a fight that he was so close to winning as well. So you got to feel a little for Dino in the loss there as well. You do. You definitely got to feel for the guy. Um, but at the same time, you know, he almost took out Trixie. He, he, he did really well and he did fight a top, almost a top five guy, number six, Trixie. And, you know, he fought valiantly, he definitely earned some respect out there, I'm sure. But Trixie bounces Dino and gets 4-1. and one. Now this sets him up for something big in the future. You know, he fought someone way lower ranked than him, risked, risked it all, Balian, and performed very well. And now next time we see Trixie, it could be, you know, a main event fight. And I uh, can't wait for that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It should be very interesting to see who Trixie mm -hmm. gets squared up with next. Fights like that are always, always fireworks. Two high-level strikers. Um, I mean, what a, what a fight then. So There's potential oozing now, out of both of them, you know? And let's see where Trixie goes. Like you said, he's 4-1. One, one mm -hmm. loss this season, so. Mm -hmm. And now we're going into the PS4 main event of the evening, Balian. Are we? Oh, yeah. Wait, are we? OG Bulldog versus CTT Pressure. Is that the PS4 main event? But the, the main event is a PS4 title defense, right? No, we're we're entering the sorry the main card okay, of the, main the evening. My bad. I was like, what? My bad. <laughs> no, 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 I said main event. No, we're good. I we're meant good. to say main card. That's okay. No, we know what you meant. I, I knew you. what you meant. I wasn't sure though, but I was like, oh, did I miss something? Are we skipping? I was like, are we skipping to the end for some reason? It's Romero versus Prime Boxer. We're skipping everything. <laughs> it's all good. Um, right. No, you are correct. It is Bulldog against Pressure <laughs> at Bantamweight. What do we know about these two? We know that, uh, you know, these guys 
are both slightly struggling in the ESFL. I mean, they both got wins, so they're not struggling too bad. OG Bulldog is uh, obviously a featured fight on the main card. Balanced style, aggressive wrestling, some heavy top control. Yeah, this guy, if he gets you on the ground, it's hard to get up. He definitely has a nice ground game. I fought him a couple of times. His stand-up is very good as well. He's ranked 37th, 1-2, and two, and he's against Canadian top teams, pressure. And all three of his attributes, pressure, pressure, pressure. So all this guy is going to do is try to pressure you in every way, shape, or form. And he's currently 1-3, and three, ranked 32, um, a little bit higher than OG Bulldog somehow, even though he has more losses, which I don't know if that really makes any sense. But who knows? I mean, it's hard to rank people when, you know, they're so close in stature. But here we go. It should be a good fight. It should be a good fight indeed, man. I'm excited to see it. You know, they're both pressure fighters. Let's see where it goes. Canadian top team three next three fights all feature Canadian top team fighters. So pressure's going to try and set the precedence for them this evening as Bulldogs working in beautifully in range of Yan. Just lead hit rear uppercut. Lead hit rear uppercut. Beautiful. And here we go. Cejudo, CPP pressure trying to answer back, but he just eating hooks. Oh, he's dodging those punches. Oh, nice lean. He's got to get out of the cage or away from the cage and he is circling a little bit to the left here yeah i mean bulldog with that yam pick you got such a high block it's one of his best stats you can just stand in front and just catch all these punches and return and i like the takedown from pressure trying to mix it up but driving that far with a double leg on a full you know a full stamina uh, yam with no ga that's going to be difficult to finish most definitely and uh, pressure nice rear hook there but very much backing off his opponent and then just sets nice. up a takedown with a late denial by OG Bulldog. Wow. That's his wheelhouse, baby. Good job right there. And Bulldog, very, very aware defensively. He, he lands his offense, but he's done some great defensive work. Steps back out as well. He did some major lunges backwards to get outside of those body shots. Eats the right hand, though, slipping into it there. Oh, the knee is so close. And OG Bulldog is really oh. pressuring pressure right oh. now. But pressure is hitting him with some big shots oh. as well. Oh, but not right now. Oh, my gosh. OG Bulldog's all over pressure. Yeah, this is Peter Yam 101. I mean, you have that, that predator perk. You can just walk your opponent down. I love the way Bulldog just major lunges back out of the way of those body hooks, man. Yeah, that was really nice. Oh, oh big straight head into kick. it. Lance Flush Bay and all oh, that movement. Oh, was no. So beautiful. And Saudo's gasping for air. Damn, I mean, that's. Talk about getting overzealous when you hurt your opponent. Nice roll underneath, though, gets away from the one two. These guys are just slinging right here, Rob. Yeah, they are slinging, definitely. And here comes OG Bulldog now. Whoa, oh, that one two head kick, but good thing CTT pressure out his block over. That would have been terrible. Good footwork by pressure there. Major lunging left and right. Both sides switching up. There's a nice switch kick to the body, though. Trying to shut down some of that movement. He dives on the ankle pick. Not going to get it. So many takedown denials from a Bulldog right here. Grabs that single collar, double knee to the head, rear uppercut, left Ooh. hook, right hook to the body. The good job by pressure, turns it round. This is a wild fight, I'm enjoying it thoroughly here. Yeah, pressure is definitely something we've seen from both fighters when they had their moments here, using the jab Ooh. to close the distance out of the fake, but good defensive awareness covering low and high from Bulldog as pressure tries to counter that, keeps the body, big right hand. All oh. these body punches really adding up on the stamina, Rob. I was just about to say, Bulldog is really digging into the body very nicely. He's evening out his damage to the head into the body very beautifully before our eyes. And it's going to pay dividends oh. in the later rounds, Bailey. And Tying angles like Lomachenko there after the 1, 2, 3. Used the right hand to step off to the right hand side and set up the angle for the left hook to the body. It was really nice work there by Bulldog, just free-flowing with these boxing combinations up close and, you know, Pressure's content to stand in the pocket and try and weather or counter or roll, but he's taken a lot of damage to the body here, right? He has, and uh, OG Bulldog has done a phenomenal job pressuring the pressure, and that's going to throw him off very much oh. so. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Pressure's not giving ground here in these situations, beautiful inside. Knee tap, There's a takedown. grabs it nicely there off that single leg. Let's see what he can do with it. Fake that back sit. And OG Bulldog's very adept at the ground. I want to see how he gets back to his feet if he does so. 
He's going for the left hand arm drag from the back set, which isn't the best yeah. one to do. Now he hits the right, gets the fake off successfully. This time denied though. The fact the pressure is denying those takedowns just shows how good his top game is, but tries to straight pass, doesn't get it. Nice deny though. As he tries to build momentum with that full guard transition. Posturing up. And Henry Cejudo on top is a problem. It is, and Bulldog's doing what he can here to create these these split second moments that he can transition from. I think that was a almost a posture up fake, but he fakes right, goes left, passes, tries to get that sweep from the bottom, doesn't get it. And there's a nice deny there where he tries to hit that back. So pressure now and it takes side wow. control. Great job by pressure, really showcasing some great jujitsu here. Good top control now. They're in this small position, they're not against the cage, Rob, so he doesn't have that easy get up. Let's we'll see if Bulldog tries to move. Looks like he's thinking about the half guard transition. Might just wait for the ref. So let's see if pressure transitions from here. There's the side. Oh, he tied it. Gets it. So beautiful, Rob. Wow, sometimes that's a that's a risk, a little bit of a gamble to go for that. And he gets it. Unfortunate for CTT, but now it's OG Bulldog on top with two minutes to go with Peter Yant's power. This could be interesting. Besides not doing any ground and pound, just posturing up. And he must have been watching the GA for that because it was the perfect timing. Chopping away from half guard. There's the underhook. Digs underneath but doesn't get it. Double shot, tries to hit the top mount, no fake to set it up. One shot Ooh. into the back sit without any fake as well. Nice denied. Now he postured from half guard. Beautiful sway though. It was nice. Good defense on the ground. Takes minimal damage, if any. But and OG just grinding away at that body, trying to build the GA. Yeah, they haven't really reset the momentum since that sweep. You know, they're both just trying to move, keep the fight moving. Whereas Bulldog, you know, he's trying to slow this down on the ground now. Deny and then sort of be able to initiate his, his fake passing offense because neither of them are setting up these transitions with fakes, they're just trying to transition off momentum and timing from striking. Now they're, they're beating the hell out of each other. Intends to do so, yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Look at these rabbit punches. Brock Lesnar is. Sick ground and pound there at the end. <laughs> Look at that freaking strike exchange though. It's 66 oh my to 68. Goodness. It's so close. <laughs> that is close. Do you see that percentage? 68 out of 75 punches landed. That's pretty intense right now. I mean, a lot of that was groundwork <laughs> though, so you got to count that. But pressure did right. a good job controlling from the top of that round. Let's see. There's third and final. Lots of damage inflicted on both sides. Ooh. Nice. Roll with the right hand, but walked in trying to counter. Oh, it's a one-two lead body kick back and up. Oh, he's swinging. OG Bulldog throwing leather. Eats a couple hooks, though. So, who knows? Not backing down. CTC pressure is on him right now. Oh, oh that right block hand. is low, This bang. is the pressure that he's oh, known he's for. Lucky slip. Turning on in the third. There's another turning side kick to the body. Tried to dip and throw the right hand. Eats a body hook for his Ooh. troubles. Comes back with his own left hook to the body. Beautiful one-two body hook there by Pressure. Oh, he's right hand out of that Going jab. The body. Again, and again pressure. and again, he's getting away from that jab and into that right hand over the top. But another turning side kick to the body. Backs him up. That's beautiful pull counter work right there, Rob. Oh, yeah. Pressure is feeling the flow. Now putting on that thick pressure we know. And that block is being tested. Oh, but no, Bulldog's the, right the one testing the block. Beautiful shot by Bulldog. If you go into that turning side kick, he's done it a, a lot now, and it creates a lot of space for him as well to retake the center of the octagon after he lands it. Now pressure Ooh. back to the cage. Going to have to deal with Bulldog and the Predator perk of Yan. With three minutes left, leading with that lead hook. The body but tries to return with a right uppercut right there. Ooh. Robbie felt it. Here we go. Oh, left hook. Oh, slips it. The trading bait, the trading. Back and forth they go. That's a lead hook work the clinch. right now from Bulldog. We'll see if Pressure makes an adjustment to this duck. Instead of trying to slip to the inside there, he might actually land underneath this lead hook and put an uppercut in. But there's a nice uppercut. The right hand lands over the top. Going to come back forward with a one-two. Piercing the block. The lead hook out of the way. The pull counter straight right drops in. Oh, this is going to pound. And that's all it takes. Big bomb.
by OG Bulldog. Damn. You can say Man. that again. I mean, that was beautiful, intense work right there. Non-stop action. Back oh, and forth. That. The whole fight. Oh, look at that. That lunge straight. That back lunge straight. Oh, beautiful. Took it Jeez. off his foot there as well. I mean, he was he was backing up. You know, he was hurt. He was moving backwards. And, uh, it was good head movement for both of them throughout the entire fight. But Bullock had some great slips, dipping, dipping his head on the inside, firing the right hand over the top. But ultimately, Bulldog, yeah, turned from pressure into counter fighting in that third round, and, and finds a victory, pulls it out of the bag. Great performance. Yeah, that was an unbelievable fight. OG Bulldog right at the bell came after CTT pressure and just, I mean, bullied the bully. And uh, it took pressure a little bit of getting used to. And then at the end there, you saw a bunch of right hooks landing for Henry Cejudo, a.k.a. CTT pressure. And he was hurting OG Bulldog a lot in that third round. And wow, that, that lunge straight from Bulldog was beautiful. And that got him that dub. And now 2-2 two and two evens up his record. He's got to be excited. And uh, what a performance by the OG Bulldog. Yeah, man. What a great scrap as well. It's nice to see sort of a good way to kick off the main card to semi-vets mm -hmm. showing up looking hungry, you know, to move up the rankings to get a better number next to their name. That's, uh, you know, CTT, the Canadian top team, sending in their first guy this evening in pressure. Doesn't get the win, but what a matchup and a fight. I mean, they can both learn from that one. It's one of those fights that almost can go either way because you're both trying to implement your offense you know you're walking forward thinking i'm going to throw a straight lead hook and they're like i'm going to plant and throw this jab right hand and it's like whoever times it there you know it's it's whoever gets the rock and gets the finish so great matchup between two guys good good matchmaking but um yeah i know that uh bulldog will be happy with that one moves to two and two now in the ESFL as well so he'll be happy to even out his record as well um right moving swiftly on if you haven't seen tonight guys we're going to show you one more time, we have moved on to the main card now. You see there, Bulldog taking on CCT pressure. Bulldog getting that win. Next up, we have another CTT camp member, Ed Gavin, taking on the vet, Rock Roman. Then Bugsy bringing it home for the Canadian top team in his matchup against Rini XO. Then after that, we have the vet, vet. Vegas MMA Wonderkins, Mr. Crooks 209, taking on the imposter Zioni hot gun young kid, the fireball kid, we shall call him, Rob, I think, for Zaf there. Um, that'll be a great matchup. And then after that, NRG is back, taking on Yerda. And in the main event, Romero 17, taking on Prime Boxer. What a great rest of the card, Rob. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. For <laughs> Oh, man, I cannot wait. So many incredible fights in the horizon. But right now, we got one right in front of us, and that is Canadian Top Team's Gavin looking for redemption for his fallen comrade pressure. Chris striking. This is in the light heavyweight division. It looks like Gavin is going to be selecting Daniel Cormier, and maybe Rock Roman is going to be picking Juan. No, he's uh, sw switching his picks, but... Just wanted to talk about these guys a little bit. I mean, you got Rock Roman, very good grappling, controls from top position so eloquently, and he ends that fight. He ends fights with ground and pound, Balian. He ends them. So two and two, ranked twentieth against a top fifteen player, two and one. CTT Gavin, great pressure, like his teammate, high level grappling, and he has some crispy striking. He does indeed. And if you look at these stats here, I can't believe Dominic Reyes is lower rated than all those other fighters. He's lower rated than Gustafson, Forrest Griffin, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz. Wow. Dominic Reyes, you know, maybe he got a little nerf after the Blackovich knockout. I don't know, but he, he he's dropped a couple of points there in the rankings all the way down. I mean, Forrest Griffin's up there like the Man. fourth best fighter in this division. How many stars is Dominic now? Is he still four and a half? Uh, Maybe he's he four? four now. I don't know. Oh my um, goodness. But anyway, here we go. Blackovich versus Jones is the matchup. Rock Roman looking to implement that grappling, no doubt. And Gavin probably wants to close the distance, land those short shots. He's got great pressure, but he's also a very good grappler as well. So we'll see Gavin's grappling versus Rock Roman. It'll probably end up on the feet until someone shoots that takedown. Happy to see it. The CTT camp. 
are back and let's see if they can get a, a win here tonight. Here we go. Oh, vicious knee. Drive the bat by Rock. Playing as John Jones. And a nice kick to push him off. Yeah, and very dynamic that kick as well. You know, he saw the space was created by Gavin and then he went right into it. So it just shows he knows the full skills get of John. Nice lead leg tump, a tee kick there, and he faked that. Came back with a beautiful leg kick as well. This is good defense. Whoa, for that, that sidestep. Oh, man. Eats the left hand of Blackovich, something he does not want to do right there. And now Rock Roman has that in his mind. He's going to be very hesitant to throw those front kicks, knowing his opponent is possibly Whoa. going to sidestep and rock him. Oh, man. Oh, these this strikes are nasty. A real problem with John, you know, it's really hard to deal with pressure. It's really hard to, 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 to box and counter because Gavin is just throwing straight and lead hooks, and you can't really do that with John. If someone's inside that boxing range, you're at a big disadvantage with John Jones unless you grab the clinch or try and set a takedown up or throw <laughs> double uppercuts just like that. The long, lanky frame can be hard to navigate. Beautiful job catching that kick. Gets the takedown. Not going to jump on top, though, Rob. No, he's going to toss him down, get a little stamina drain, and put some pressure. And now on top with John Jones. Very a lot sexy. of time on the clock, folks. This could be dangerous. Very sexy, that single leg off the ankle pick. I like that. Oh, I like it, too. And now he's on top. Maintaining half guard, Bailey and Blood splurting out of the face of Juan. Splurting indeed. There's the underhook. Digs it. He's going to get it. Oh, he gets it. Nice Good job by that. Gavin. Look at the stamina difference already, though. Nice full guard. Momentum sweep. Goes for two short shots. Three now. Not setting up. Both content to work. Nice posture from Gavin. He's going to rain from the top. Going to have to be careful with that stamina. Oh, Ooh, nice wow. shots. Breaking through the block, though. Good job. Slow patience from Rock Roman. Tries to build the full guard momentum as well. Doesn't get it now. Nice easy pass for Gavin. There's the half guard. Straight bump back for Rock Roman again. He's trying to roll to that, that sweep there, Rob. He keeps getting the nice, nice job. Stopping the posture up this time, though, and gets the easy get up against the cage. Yeah, but look at his stamina. He's going to get slammed or tossed or big Whoa, shots are going to land because knees. of it. And he does. Big knees, Bay. Now he's getting oh, teed off such on. such a bad place to be. Oh, Gavin all block. over him. We've got to move that head. Great work by Gavin taking advantage of that low stamina. Like you said, oh two my knees for the rock. And this is exactly where you want to be if you're Gavin against a John Jones play. You know, in tight, in the clinch, also in boxing range, just letting go of these hands. And that's exactly what he was doing right there. Oh, and he is, Gavin is landing that body hook right hook to the head so beautifully. And it's doing so much damage to Mr. Jones over there. And uh, wow, what a first round. Big round for Gavin. Uh, remember, he's definitely in know, the lead right now. Gavin's got very good hands. He did knock out Ed oh, Parker in his last matchup. You know, that just proves how good his, uh, his striking is. Beautiful oh, man, slip I didn't know right that. There. Yeah, indeed he did, and he's if he's able to continuously close the distance on Rock Roman, it's going to be a real tough, a real tough job for Rock. Shoots in, pulls guard. Oh, <laughs> and he's a straight punch. Yeah, jumps and here on. Comes the ground and bounce. Damn, Gavin's all <laughs> offense all the time. Doesn't care. Reclinches two knees up the middle there, and Rock trying to throw back, and Rock can tend to push the pressure. He's walking into the boxing range here. Oh, oh he did it again. Oh. 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 Jeez! Good wow. Is Gavin. he flicking that left stick or is he just slightly moving? I don't know. And, and you know, I feel for Rock Roman because he's trying to play like John Jones. You know, he got rocked in the first round because he missed that sidekick. And then he gets finished and hit with a big right hand again because that jump turning sidekick just missed. We don't get to see it. We're just seeing the uppercut there, but. You know, those spinning techniques, it, it just sucks. That sometimes the tracking isn't very good, but you can also sidestep, like you said. Ladies and gentlemen, right. And it's just so risky. And I was wondering if that's what he was doing. Yeah, it, it can it be. It didn't look like he was sidestepping, but he was somehow getting out of the way of it. I don't know. I, I'd have to go back and watch it. But, but yeah, it right. definitely can be risky to, to throw those techniques. And, you know, Rock Roman's just trying to fight like John, just trying to use the frame, just trying to use that length to... Um, <laughs> Create space and attack from the outside like you would want to do with the John Jones pick. But unfortunately, I mean, as good as stats that John Jones had, Rob, I mean, it's very hard to use John Jones in this game. Maintaining the, the range necessary to inflict maximum damage is very difficult. 
a lot of people are just going to try and step inside of those ranges. Then you've got to get more dynamic with your knees and your elbows. But to trade boxing combinations, it just it's not always viable or beneficial to do that with John. I'm not saying Rock tried to do that, but Gavin kind of knew that going in and definitely used that to his advantage as part of his game plan. Yeah, I mean, just building on that win over Ed Parker last week, and he does have really crisp striking, and uh, his IQ, knowing where his opponent's stamina is at, knowing which shots to select, that body hook, right hook to the face was beautiful. Those knees against the clinch were so nice, and uh, man, Gavin just put on a clinic. That was beautiful. Um, And John Jones... Yeah, he's a tough player to use on the feet, but if you do get it to the ground, and that's Rock Roman's specialty, I believe he's pretty damn nasty down there, right, Balian? Oh, yeah, he is, definitely, for sure. I mean, he's got good striking, too. I mean, he, he had a few moments. He got a few rocks. It's just, like, a, I mean, that John Jones pick's not... Yeah, double not, uppercut. Double bah, uppercut, bah, yeah, early in nice. the fight. I mean, that's, again, with John, you know, you, you don't have much else. I mean, you can throw your right hook, but... It's not going to do much. Your left hook is going to come out quite slow. Your straights are good, but the optimal range for your straight punch and, and it landing is not the same as, as everybody else's. So when you throw it, it has to be at a longer range than, than everybody else's. So it's not always easy to, to get that in you know, efficient range, especially because people are going to step inside of it. So it's tough with John, you know, you got to clinch, you got to, you can hit them when they're moving backwards, but when they're coming at you, it's very difficult to land your own offense and, to stop someone pressuring you is again difficult unless you shoot unless you grab the clinch time your spinning elbows it's it's not always the easiest thing so you know rock roman going for john ultimately gavin's striking coming out on top there in that situation and adding another name to the list of veterans he's beaten there ed parker and now rock roman so gavin's building momentum for those boys at the canadian top team and speaking of them they have one more representative tonight in bugsy bjj who will be uh taking on the wonderful Rini at Welton. Yeah, and uh, I'm by the scouting report. They say that Bugsy is even on another level on his striking. He's an elite striker coming out of that CTT camp. So obviously, you know, going against Gavin, going against pressure, you're gonna just develop some sick striking. He's currently ranked 23, two and three, uh, but he is facing Rini, and I believe. Riney, I believe she is a counter striker. Mm -hmm. She's patient. She has a lot of heart and she's dangerous. And I've seen her fight a couple of times and and she's very, very for sure skillful in all the areas of the game. And she's ranked 18, two and two. And uh, this is going to be an interesting fight to see where these two uh, play out or where these two mesh up or where these two, you know, where they're going to be in their future of the ESFL. For sure. I this mean, is a big moment for both these guys. Talk about Riney striking. Not only is it impressive, it's, it's clean. It's clinical. It's like, you made a mistake. Here's a four-piece combination that's all perfectly timed right. to maximize you know, your imminent death. You know, she's, she's very clinical with her striking. But like you said, Bugsy, an elite striker as well, and a competent grappler. So... This will be very interesting. I want to see if Bugsy's pressure can get countered by Riney. They're both kind of matched up evenly right now. Number 23 taking on the number 18. So it's going to be an interesting competition here. Well to wait. Riney going with the uh, GSP pick. I think we saw her do that in her last fight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but certainly the striking advantage would go to Bugsy with the cover child, Mr. Jorge Masvidal, or one of them. But Riley's going to have that option to dominate on the ground if she needs to. Nice backflip. And they're going to touch him up here. Three more fights after this one, including our co-main event and main event. But beautiful double knee off the back to Ryan. He stuffs the takedown, though. And this pressure from Bugsy is already coming out. Nice one-two. Shoots a single. It was beautifully timed. Doesn't get it. And now the knees from Bugsy. That is absolutely amazing that Bugsy came out with a flying knee with Masvidal. Fair play, sir. Nice teak by Here we go. Riney. Nice right hand for Riney. Yeah, and the teak was good too. Just got stuffed because of the range. I love Bugsy started stepping with the sprinting right here, mixing up the speed oh. of his entrances. Look at these four piece combinations. He's thrown down the middle though. Riney landing a one four over the top. Trying to counter. There's that slip straight as well. Good Ooh. work stopping this pressure. Bugsy right on Riney the end. is fighting well on the back foot. 
She is, but these are all on the end. Nice, beautiful timing, though. That was very quick. Cut to the inside side control, but roll straight to sprawl here for Bugsy, and he might be near the cage here, Rob. Yes, he is. There's the easy get up for him right there. Nicely timed. Right, right, right. That makes a lot of sense, Bay. I think you just taught me something there. Yeah, you got to be careful from that position. If you're near the cage, that, that's there for them. The nice gallop. And back in the clinch is right, Bugsy. Right, right. Keeping this pressure on. Keeping Riley falls up against this cage. Definitely the fight that Bugsy's been looking for. Riley's barely been able to step on the inside of that black octagon. And I love these one two ones Ooh, from Bugsy. Not beautiful. something we see a lot. Definitely something effective when you're moving forward. Nice knee inside trip from Ryan, who's back on top position. Going to grab side control. No, she's not. Bugsy doing well. And from all this pressure that we're seeing from Bugsy, Ryan's really defending herself well. Hasn't really taken too much head damage with GSP, who does have a low head uh, chin stat. Oh. And, and she's firing back nicely. Good body work by Ooh. Bugsy, though. Oh. Beautiful Big job left hook slipping, back. though. Yeah, Bugsy came over the top, went back to the body there as well. Ryan being a little patient here. Nice switch to the body. Good catch, though. Head kick block, though. Straight left. Ooh, overhand over the top. And another clinch attempt. Ankle picks there. Oh, the up kick. Stopping that. This fight is Canada. crazy. These, guys, these two are so good. Very evenly matched as well, I would say. So evenly matched. Oh. The spacing between them and, oh. like, they're oh. making each other miss with just slight steps. Oh, there's oh, the right so hand. Nice. She was trying to ah. time it. Oh, Riney. Back Big to shot. the body. A little flex right there from Bugsy. He don't care, babe. He don't care. Oh, he misses, though. He better care soon. He might get dropped on his back. Looks like he's trying to drag Ryan in. Hit the axe kick. Just missing. Oh, what? That, that looked like it should have landed. It looked like it should have landed, but he got just out of the way of it. Advancing with that footwork. Good job by Ryan. He's grabbing that double knee. Beautiful timing. Oh, Such a big good job. Knees. Grabbing that Ryan, clinch. all over Bugsy. Oh, steps inside of the jab with the left hook <laughs> as well. Now pressure Who against is the cage girl? with the same right hand. Oh, the left hook as well. Oh, oh. this is crazy. Balian, what the heck? Great fight. What is going on Here right now, Balian? This Second is incredible. Round. Ooh, single leg attempt there, just to close the distance, maybe that right Ooh. hand's looping over the top, Ryan, he does a beautiful job stepping to the outside, there's the double knee in the clinch, oh and the inside goodness. trip, dumps him one more time, lead hook to the body, just out of range, and Bugsy's going to step back with that pressure, that right hand looping over the top for Bugsy oh. though, Rob, oh, there it is again, oh, oh there you the go, Bugsy kick. now in control, oh, front kick, I love it's it, it's civil like, have yeah. Ryan in all sorts of trouble now, Great adjustment to the one two over the top, the one two up the middle. Ooh. Stops that duck and here we go. Bugsy just letting those hands fly. Oh, Rob. Gonna be I'm real really tough. impressed with Riney's ability to throw that stationary jab right hook perfectly sometimes. It's just so nice. It is, but that jab is not always gonna stop the lead strike from Bugsy and you know, a straight might do in some situations, but she is leaning off to the right hand side and nailing that straight, but Bugsy's ooh, that's close. Oh, Riley's head the body kick while flexing. is really low, Rob, and it's low enough that this pressure might just overwhelm her. She might not be able to do much about it. She's lost quite a bit of head health off there, so has to be really yeah, careful. You know, if she gets caught with low stamina. Oh, there's another knee to the head. Good job. Oh. Man, she took advantage of Bugsy having low stamina, grab that clinch, and just land a beautiful knee. And Bugsy thought it was go to the Bugsy thought it was gonna go to the body, but no, right to the face it went. Fine. Double jab there from Ryan. He comes up with the right hand, comes back with a lead hook after that miss for uppercut. His oh my god! Axe kicks just coming out, and she's just swinging ahead. Oh, so close with a head kick. Uppercut's just out of range, and Bugsy's still on the pressure, still on the pedal, trying to walk forward. One, two, head kick. Off the oh, shoulder as Bugsy close. dips to throw the right hand. Back in the clinch again, this time back to the body. Good work from the clinch from Mixing Ryan in this well. fight. There's a single on the inside, same as the first round. A minute and a half left to work. And as GSP, Ryan really needs to do some good work here. I mean, she's very, she's held her own so much so on the feet. But Bugsy just... So good, able to get right back up. Yeah. And Masvidal, look at that stamina, bay. He's running low on gas. And Ryan, he's just taking so much damage. There it is. Oh, she goes with the jab, though. Oh, 
Oh, she could have had it right there. Oh, there's the right hand again. And there's the lead hook putting her down. She just doesn't have enough head help. In these situations, it's real risky. And that's going to be all she wrote. Unfortunately, Bugsy. Oh, man. Getting the finish right there. Good wow. job. Good finish. Great fight from both of them. And yeah, right there, you know, she, she had a chance to maybe catch him. Went with the jab right hand. And that's something that's just ingrained to you as a fighter. You know, if that's a combination you like, that's great. But in those Jeez. split second situations, you know, that jab that lands, if that had been another strike, it might have been a bit more damaging enough to stop that final onslaught. But the amount of damage that Bugsy was able to dish out early made it really difficult for Riley to defend late when you're trapped against the cage with someone like Luay Masvidal who does as much damage as he does and as much damage to your block it's really really tough to to not just crumble in those situations not that you're not fighting well you just don't have the head help or the block to be able to take three punch combinations you know and in quick succession it's really hard to get away from that pressure at that stage. So good fight by both of them. Ryan did a great job with the takedowns and in the stand-up as well. Bugsy also, what a fight there, Rob. Oh, it was just incredible. I mean, that fights like that are, are the ones that make me want to pick up the PS4 controller and go play some UFC. And Ryan is so impressive. The way, I don't know, the way she fights is just so eloquent or beautiful and vicious. And, uh, Bugsy to deal with Riney or Rinny is it Rinny Riney to deal with that striking to deal with someone as talented as Riney just certifies him as an elite striker like we were talking about earlier I mean Bugsy with Jorge Masvidal had to get over that hump that mountain which was Riney the vicious counter striker and uh was just so back and forth and wild and to stay you know, cool, calm, and collected, unlike myself. As I do this commentary, it's it's just so exciting to watch Bailey and and, and uh, what a win for Bugsy. Now three and three, and uh, I don't think either of these people lost any stock in their uh, competitive career in the SFL. I mean, that was a would agree. beautiful thing to I watch. That was awesome. Great fight. And, you know, and at certain points, you know, when, once you're in the season, you've picked up some wins, you've picked up some losses, you know, it, it can be really hard to grind your way to the top. All you can do in a fight like that is just... Take what you can from it. Take it as an experience. You got your name out there. You got some respect, you know, just take it back to the drawing board and just try and show up, you know, not try and get disheartened and, and feel like, you know, you didn't do as well as you wanted no to because, you know, she's three and two or two and three, excuse me. There's there's nothing wrong with that. Many people obviously are two and three. It's the same goes for everybody, you know. All you can do is just show up again and try and get better. It's really, really, really hard to, I mean, like we see the people at the top of the year so far. Like, how many people are undefeated this season? I think one person in all of PlayStation the champ. is the undefeated. The champ, you know? It's so difficult to go undefeated, let alone, you know, just keep a decent record. You know, we've got people in the top 10. They've all got losses. You know, some of them in there, you know, like two losses with four wins. It's, it's a tough thing to do. The level of competition is so high. The game's so crazy. You know, it's hard to get a consistent mm -hmm. win streak together against the highest level so um all you can do there is like, oh yeah you showed up to fight on the weekend you got your licks in you got your fight in you got some training you got some you know uh, crowd support you know you've got to show up next time and and you know improve and, and if you want to make a run for it you know maybe not this season but you know next season is always around the corner so there's always that for you as well oh my goodness right Let's move on. It is the Coco main event of the evening. The highly touted Fireball Kid Ziaf or Ziaf or Imposta, Imposta Zioni, whatever you want to call him. I'm calling him the Fireball Kid now. I'm Imposta taking, Zioni. Imposta Zioni. I'm saying he's taking on Crooks 209 of Vegas MMA. What a matchup. What a fight. And uh, we're getting started right now. <laughs> featherweight division. Yeah, it's like, yeah, the featherweight division, ladies and gentlemen. You got... The young prodigy, I like to call him, Zayaf, a.k.a. Impasta Zioni. He's been doing his research. He's like Dexter, the mad scientist, looking at every video, talking to every high-level player he can, just absorbing information like a sponge, creating content, just trying to put so much effort into UFC. And that's why he's so high up on this bill. He's so nasty with his beautiful kickboxing combinations, unorthodox striking but he is going against a legend of the game, Crooks 209. 
one of the best pressure boxer slash strikers in the game. He sets so many traps for you. He stays so patient and he is so dangerous. One of the best strikers, one of the best strikers hands down in the game. And if you try to hold him down, it's way too hard. So this right here is a key matchup in the ESFL. One of these guys could be a future champion. And here we go, Connor versus Connor. I like the adjustment from, from Zayaf as well. He's taking a Connor pick. This is not something we saw when he first arrived in the ESFL. This is the evolution and confidence in his striking. Those Vegas MMA guys love the Connor matchup and Crooks timing a beautiful straight right lead hook right there. Zayaf tries to step in. There's a nice little teep and then a lead hook to the body as well the straight was timed by Zayaf and then immediately countered by Crooks as he slipped the next one and it seems like it's a battle Ooh. between Impasa Zioni's kickboxing and Crooks's boxing I, mean, I know Crooks does have some box uh, kickboxing but he usually uses his hands majority of the time I mean Crooks will be very very unlikely to throw unless it's going to land good double jab by Zayaf I like that steps in with the lead hand and look at these just trading backwards forth on a on like a pin in the middle of the octagon here just toe to toe opposite stances Cook's trying to feather that straight right off Ooh. that lead hook again there this time the double jab stopping that teeth steps in oh, with the man. jab right hand all dips immediately afterwards to throw the left this time Robin lands it yeah, Zayab is giving Crooks some trouble with that quick double jab, and he's mixing up that third strike. Sometimes he's not throwing, sometimes he's throwing the hook, sometimes he's throwing the straight. Oh, but there's Crooks! Just destroying oh, every game man. that Impasa Zioni could have created in the lab. I oh, mean, beautiful spinning back into the body. Too. Crooks in charge, in control. The thing about that is when, when Zayab went down, he had full block. You know, he got clipped on a counter. He right. tried to throw another combo to follow up, and he got slipped again and then hit with a three-piece. So... You know, that's Zayev maybe getting a bit overzealous. I mean, when he gets hurt, you know, maybe try to recover a little because Crooks is looking to dive on those opportunities. Again, oh, he's re-entering right there, and that's dangerous, Rob. You know, he got clipped, and then he stayed around to land his own shot, and almost got tickled down to the mat one more time. Yeah, it's a dangerous game. You're playing Russian roulette when you're fighting with Crooks in the pocket like this, but... And Pasta Zioni is very confident as well. And he's really staying a little long here with nice. these long jabs and straights. I like the left hand and then you'll dip and re throw the left hand. That's nice. And still using that double jab. I think he's got confidence in the fact that he knows it's not going to take much to drop Crooks as well. So even if he gets a little bit behind in these opening rounds, he's still going to be able to have those, those three four punch combinations. Oh, drop Crooks clean as well. And this time a nice slip on the left double jab in. Dips back to that left hand and the lead uppercut bouncing off the block. And Ziaf is kind of just standing there at a specific range while Crooks is kind of playing a little bit more footsies. And Ziaf is really leaning on these big block breaking combinations he's developed. Really going to the double jab as well. He's done some good work with it, but counter. Ooh, there. what a round. Good round indeed. I mean, Crooks drops him twice. No, once, excuse me. Yeah, once. Um, Trading right Ooh. there, the right hand intercepted by the, the rear uppercut and then the lead hook. And that's why that jab right hand is, is, is okay, Rob, but you jab and by the time that right hand comes in, someone could have banged an uppercut up the middle and we saw that right there. Right. And now round number two, Crooks putting on a little pressure and as the fight goes on, Crooks kind of turns up that pressure knob Oof. all the way up into the third round. It gets pretty scary. Round number three, Crooks, is that's probably his best round. Oh, and this is it! Those block breaks are oh, so nasty by Zaya. So good. Four piece with the lead hook. Twice in a row. The head held super low for Cooks. He's got to hold that bicep right there and does so nicely. Let's we'll see if Zayev wants to take this to the mat. He doesn't. And like we said, that's all Zayev needed there. You know, he got down on the round in the first a little bit. But he was real patient and he knew with one little four piece combo is all it takes. And that was lightning sp uh, speed right there to get that four piece in there. Most definitely, and, and now Impasa Zioni is mixing it up, throwing two pieces out there, kind of seeing what his opponent's going to do, and he doesn't want to mix up those four pieces too much, but he knows he's looking for that big block break, and Crooks needs to recognize it and plan accordingly here. Yeah, Zayev's really evolved his game Ooh. to where he's throwing this one-two, and then immediately slipping for your counter and firing his own straight. So there's a lot of double jabs, a lot of one-two, slip left, straight left again from Zayev. 
And that double jab is so money for Zayab. He used it so well. Look at that head health on Crooks. Oh, but watch out! Oh, oh just man, missing what with the duck. lead hook. If he'd have moved forward and threw it, he would have got it, but he stood oh, it and threw it stationary right there. So it's bang. just with. There's a straight left again. Double jab, left hand. Nice duck under by Crooks. Let's see if Zayef makes the read. The double jab, keeping oh. it back here. Into the straight left one more time. The left hand with the lead uppercut. Drops him again and now in full mount here. This is huge for Zayef if he can pick up a win against Crooks. And he does so there. Man. Game pasta is the only, holy moly. And in Crooks, his second loss of the season. And Zayaf, man, you know, he posted a little picture on Twitter the other day at the start of season two with his name number one in ranked, showing up, grinding, putting the time in, and runs away with it right there, man. I mean, this is this is a great example of when the ESFL was founded, you know, we had a lot of vets who came in, who've been playing the game since, you know, the THQ UFC 3 days. And I know Zayef has been playing the games for a long time as well, but he wasn't here for UFC 3. He wasn't around for the start of the ESFL, but he saw these other players compete and he said he wanted a piece of that action. And the, the assistance of these legendary people like Crooks have motivated this kid to get in the gym, to work on his game, to improve and, and really just take this in as what he wants to do and how he wants to compete. Uh, compete in a gaming perspective in the gaming sphere and he's choosing here in the sfl putting his time and energy into it and paying off rob man i mean this guy's putting in some serious hours to get to the number one leaderboard on the playstation and it's it's showing right there congratulations zayef great performance back and forward saw some adversity at the start made the adjustment stayed patient and when he had that moment he exploded and didn't let up from there oh yeah most definitely i mean zayef is a kid who comes into the game, like you said, has no experience prior, puts in so much hard work, so much dedication, and is a very intelligent young man. And, you know, face some adversity in the ESFL. You know, it's hard to go unbeaten. He's had three losses, but that he didn't let those three losses, you know, hinder him from coming back and competing and continually putting on the line. And now he's in a situation where he's just beat an absolute legend in Crooks in a dominant fashion. And he moves to six and three. And now he is in the mix for contendership for that title, possibly with that performance. And, uh, you know, sky's the limits for Zayaf, the young prodigy. So impressive. I mean, those that double jab and those four punch combinations to break that block. I mean, I fought him a couple of times or I fought him a lot. And and Zayaf is just he's a different breed. There's something about him that's different. And whenever there's something about you that's different, it's dangerous. And. Yo, he's he's a hard nut to crack. He's very hard to figure out, and he's got some very good flow, and he's got some highly reactive thumb thumbs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, it'll be interesting <laughs> to see the ceiling of his potential if he can continue to grow. I mean, he was ranked number six coming into this one. That's a nice solid win, moving up to six and three this season. So we'll see if the matchmakers can find a, a top five opponent for him, perhaps, and really test him against another high-level uh, opponent. Speaking, though, of high-level opponents, we have now the co-main event of the evening. It's a short-notice replacement in Yerda, who's coming in to fight the killer, Mr. Kinetic NRG. Uh, they are ready to go. And this is things are heating up for this one at Featherweight right now, you know. And Yerda, you know, wisely showing up on short notice, snatch an opportunity to face one of the greatest fighters to ever compete in the ESFL. Um, and, you know, sometimes I feel like Kinetic's like the cyborg of the ESFL. You know, the Chris Cyborg, you know, sometimes people show up short notice or, you know, he just runs through them, basically. You know, it doesn't even look like a fight. So we'll see how Kinetic looks tonight if he's going to take Yerda and just smash him through the octagon doors or if Yerda's going to show up and surprise us all here as well. Yeah, Kinetic NRG just he just sometimes he doesn't, you know, you look at his Twitter page, he seems like he's not really too motivated right now. He's not training as hard as he possibly could. But then he shows up to these events at the top of the bills and he just puts on these clinics. So this guy is a an absolute legend of the game. We all know Kinetic NRG, if you don't know, legend of the game. And he's stepping in here for another uh, fight, and it's always a treat to watch. So he's a top five. And Yurta has his hands full. Well, I would Yurta. hope 
I was just going to say, ben. I would hope that, you know, Romero and, and that matchup with him in that tournament, you know, Kinetic would want to show up and, you know, make his way to the title, try and win that belt. So we'll see him immediately trading in the pocket. Nice slip by Yada with a straight Bang. right hand there. Catching Kinetic as he's stepping in with that jab rear hook. Kinetic re-slipping there as well. Yada just timing these beautifully, Rob, over and over again. Oh, he's got the Yarda rhythm. Doing a good job with that right hand. And Kinetic really likes to slip before he strikes to avoid that, but... Kinetic will make an adjustment, and he'll make it fast. Yeah, and he's going to have to. I mean, that was just Yada perfectly timing the rhythm of Kinetic. There's no catching him, almost frame-trapping him right here against the cage. Now Kinetic just trying to throw some bombs. Yada blocking well, and his fight's heating up. He's indeed switched stance from Yada. He's gone back to orthodox right here. Now going to slip over that jab. Right hook trying to loop around for Kinetic. Nice job getting on the inside of that. Plants throws the right hook, then the left hook. As Yoda's just bouncing all these off the block. A clinch from Kinetic. Going to use that to drive to the cage and stick a big right hand in there. As he follows up with a left hook. Left hook again, straight right. And Yoda down oh. already. Big just shot. Circle out. Two shots to the body rub. Back up to the head. And again, we're just seeing Kinetic and RG come out here and just... Put a clinic on his opponent. Yerda had some early success, but Kinetic and RG's all over him right now. Yeah, Yerda's doing a good job of dipping when he needs to and firing that straight right. You know, they're both just trading these slip straight rights down the middle. And he's timing Kinetic occasionally with it. It's still dangerous. He could catch him and then follow up and, and get a rock. Kinetic's not safe from damage here. Aldo's got some power and he's taken a few shots already. But Kinetic definitely found timing for his combos and really just trapped him against the cage. Followed up with double lead hooks and the straights that dropped him. So let's see if Yana can, can try and find a way to time Kinetic as he's coming in. Or if Kinetic's going to keep working that block right there like that and find another knockdown. That was a long four-piece combo by Kinetic right there. Whoa, oh. now. Yurda's in trouble. Oh! Yurda's not in trouble. Yurda's out. He's unconscious. unconscious. This fight's over. I mean, look, how Kinetic often do you see somebody do that? You know, he <laughs> put him out. I mean, rocked him once and then put him out cold. No drop down, no TKO. Just Kinetic knows the next strike, you know, in the, in the combination. And he put that left hook on him with that right hand there, you know. It was... It was night night from there. It was that left hook that dropped him, but the right hand that knocked him out cold on the way down, just bleeding on the canvas. And, you know, he had a good job initially. Timing that, he had, he had the rhythm of Kinetic matched up nicely at the start of that fight. But, you know, Kinetic is the hurricane of pain, Rob. And he'll just pressure, pressure. And then it's not even like constant pressure. It's I'm going to hurt you a little bit. Then I'm going to hurt you a little bit more. And you haven't recovered, so I'm going to hurt you a little bit more. And now you have no block and half head health. And here comes the four-piece combo that's going to put you out. You know, it's just a little bit and then a little bit more. And now you're in a bad spot and you're going to get knocked out. So it's almost like you give a little ground. And then you've been forced to give a little more from that. And then it's too late. The fight's already over. Seems to be the case with Kinetic time and time again. He comes in here and he just takes out... Uh, 23 ranked Yerda. I mean, there's not really much more to say. He's incredible. We all know he's incredible. He continues to prove himself. He knows how to... Comp One thing about Kinetic RG, I will say, he really knows how to win. Yeah, he's insanely uh, talented in every aspect of the game. He has so much game knowledge. But the ability to come in here with the crowd and compete at the level he does makes him even more dangerous. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'd really like to see a uh, kinetic NRG and not an old vet, but a, a vet, a distinguished vet legend against a new upcoming hungry lion in Zayaf. That would be a great fight to see who would be the next contender. I'm not the matchmaker, but man, that'd be exciting. That would be interesting. For sure. I, I think they already fought, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh, yeah, they did. They I think did. Kinetic already fought, and Kinetic took him out pretty quickly there. And I think, as he said in That's chat, true. he wants Romero, man. He wants that belt. And, oh, you know, he wants Romero. Well, you're giving props to Kinetic. Hey. I'll, I'll jump on there and say, you know, the man has has had a target on his back since competing in the ESFL. He always has a target on his back. Now, I know he's extremely skilled, and so some of these fights are, are, are maybe they're not easy for him, but, you know, Sometimes, you know, he's not matched up against players of his higher skill level. But in those instances, 
he always has so much pressure on him to win, Rob. You know, heavy sits the crown yeah. when you've got that name and that target. Right. Every fight is about not only winning, but also, you know, performing and living up to your own hype almost. And he does that consistently. So props to him for not only winning consistently, but also showing up, dealing with that, handling the losses, rolling forward and coming back hungry every time. So there we go. Good fight. Oh, yeah. Most right. definitely. And now we have the main event. Finally, I can say this. The main event of the evening, there Balian. There we go. There we go. Indeedy. It should be a good one. Um, Let's see. Oh, Prime is hosting this one for us this evening. And, you know, we've, we, we, this, is, this is a great matchup here. Um, We've seen both fighters compete now for a while through this, this season. Uh, Prime boxers look good. Did drop a loss right there. Now, I need to reminding of who we lost to in the tournament getting themselves ready if it's a flyweight that'll be interesting but um on paper you know this is an interesting matchup we know that prime boxer is coming over from the fight night games he has shown really good head movement really good ability to slip dip and throw that right hand over the top as well as good clean combinations he doubles up on punches uh, to the same side and mixes up his timings on those but romero has also shown an incredibly high level of striking um I definitely think it'll be an even matchup on the feet, but you have to think about Romero's grappling ability and ground game. And he's definitely the sort of player that's going to maximize his strengths in these fights, wouldn't you say, Rob? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Romero is like a computer. He stands back in these fights, keeps like a almost an extra step of range between him and his opponent in that first round. He downloads and uses that really high fight IQ to make those reads and he doesn't put himself in too much danger but he's so nasty when he comes in but then he gets out and he really utilizes his strength of his fighter very well he's undefeated 5-0 and and he, he's, he's just incredible like one of the best players in the game in my opinion but he's fighting this guy prime boxer from fight night ranked number four and prime boxer just keeps beating people that he's not supposed to be True. And now we're in a yeah, now we're in a situation where he's at the title. Can he beat Romero? Is how good is Prime Boxer? We're about to find out right now. I mean, he's got great stand up. He's so nasty with his boxing. He's been able to knock out his opponents and defend himself on the ground. So this should be a very very good five round war. I think this is a uh, mighty mouse mirror match as well. Oh flyweight! Oh no! Here we go! It's gonna be fast as hell. ESFL 92, the main event of the evening here. Romero making his first title defense against Prime Boxer. They're off. There's good pressure by Romero early. Trying to dip in, use that lead hand to fake. See where Prime's gonna go. Nice job by Prime. Nice three-piece combos Ooh. on the return. Most definitely catching Romero early with some good shots. Romero doing a lot of lead hand work, a lot of lead hand fakes, baiting out all of this offense here uh, um, from Prime Boxer. You know, these one twos, this is stuff that Romero's forcing him to throw with the pressure, and Romero's not there for it. No, and he's doing a good job of mixing up that body Ooh. kick in there, too, to get that range, ranged assault. Nice. Check hooks right there from Romero. Is he stout? He's just planting these because. He feels like Prime's entering with these two-punch combinations and then will slip and try and land the third. So after these two-punch combinations, Romero's just firing these hooks at him to try and time him when he's plied his feet. He had a little bit of success with that right there. Catches the teeth this time. Let's see if Romero gets a takedown. Pushes him to the cage. Grabs a single. Transitions to the double. Locks the hands. Beautiful work. To oh. and, try. and that's the grappling knowledge right there, Romero. Most definitely. Romero gets a good takedown. Now he's on top. He has a lot of time to work. He's trying to get that GA. Yeah, and we'll now the side see, control. We'll see where Boxer is. We've seen him grapple a little bit. You know, it's a different game when you've been handling this grappling system since UFC 1. Romero certainly has and has been using it to his full advantage. Attacks with a lot of submission attempts. Good job by Prime. Stopping that back now. Doesn't want that to happen. He's... Being real patient here. Let's see how patient he can be. Romero going back to the spool position. Easy get up against the cage there by Prime. Great work. And now going to the body with those knees. Now Prime has an opportunity here against the cage to do some damage. But he kind of just lets him, lets him off the hook there. Double leg falling short right there for Romero. Just out of range of that. Tries to swing with these three punch hooks. He's been climbing and throwing a lot of those in close, Rob. And he goes to him again here. 
big punches when Prime's plotting his feet in the in the middle. Romero is just being so good with his footwork, making Prime miss, not taking any damage, and look, he's just dishing it out on yeah. on Prime Boxer right now. There's the tip again, catches it. Gonna fall on top as well. Awesome. You see him step back to bait out the up kick. You know, he dropped him, stepped back, the kick came out, it turned into a leg kick because Prime was throwing it, and then he jumped on top. So good game knowledge at a high level from Romero, knowing that the immediate counter is gonna be that up kick, but literally waiting for it to come out before jumping on top. Just shows how much high level competition he's had, but Prime gets the sweep here, Rob. Half guard top position. That's gonna give him a little confidence going into round number two. We only have 10 seconds left. He's getting some ground and pound, but again, Romero just catches it beautifully and sweeps the position and locks a choke in. Romero is so dangerous. Yeah, I mean, the, the striking there towards the end of that first round, you really saw Prime constantly trying to enter the pocket with his one twos, and Romero just covering and then just throwing back those three piece combinations with the hooks, the big powerful hooks, because Prime was walking himself into hook range over and over again and, and you know, Romero is just standing there and just throwing the hooks. Yeah, for sure. And Prime Boxer, oh, I don't know, he hasn't done too much, but there we go. That was a nice little three punch combination. Romero goes for the takedown, Bailey, and, and unable to get oh. a good defense by Prime Boxer, but he's a couple shots at the end there. Yeah, breaks from the clinch, throwing that big right hand, and then the lead uppercut. Prime just Team up. getting in his face now. Doesn't like anything that happened in the first round. Nice oh. four piece oh. for Romero, but Prime's got to back off. You know, his head health is flashing. He needs to compose himself just because he wants to give it back as good as he's taken it in these exchanges you've got to know when you've lost an exchange and, and take some time to recover or you're just going to lose the next one and that's what just happened right oh, there as he eats that rear uppercut goodness. Romero is so good oh big shot Prime Box is in serious trouble here folks and now still See, Romero's never there to be hit, babe. Yeah, I mean, he's elusive. That's the faints. Damn Jaguar. You don't see the faints as much, but you know, he did that throughout the first half of that first round. He brought out all that offense from Prime, who feels like going backwards. He can't land anything, so his only option is to run forwards, which is just running him into range of Romero. A time and time again, he's going to finish with this ground. No, 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 he's good. He's good. But Prime Boxer is not good. His head is being battered right now. He barely could stand. He, butterflies are fluttering in his head. I don't know if he's going to be able to do this, man. And he's still. Being a lot more patient here. You see all these fakes. This one was what was. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you see that knee? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Ground and pound with the one, two, Ooh. four, the finish. Great work mm. by your champion and still the Mero 17. Right? Holy moly. Romero just made Prime Boxer look average. And uh, that is, I don't even know what to say. That's a testament to his skill. His ability to do in every situation he almost fights perfectly he, he lets boxer push or put pressure on him okay okay bides his time and then boom he flashes bang 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 and then he's just all over him I, every he's just so good he's incredible yeah i mean it I can't was even you can't even can't even talk I about can't it. Can't even talk. Bay, it's too good. I mean, I think that was, that, that, you know, that was a really interesting start to that fight to see who was going to apply the pressure, who was going to do what. Romero definitely applying the pressure early, but he has such a great ability to fake whilst moving forward. And it's not that people give him too much respect. That's definitely not the case. I think you just feel his command of range. And, you know, Prime was right. giving ground. And whenever he was giving ground, Romero would close that space and then Prime would try and counter. But like you said, Romero wasn't there. It was a lot of in and out, in and out, using those fakes to draw out the offense from Prime. And then when Prime realized he couldn't hit him going backwards, he was forced to enter the pocket. And that's when he was moving forwards with his one-two. And, you know, Romero was just planning initially, taking the pressure of the one-two and literally just planting and throwing those hooks. You know, he, he, he just brought boxer in time and time again romero wasn't really even, even moving in those situations prime would close range romero just covers up and he's just 
throwing three-piece combos back with hooks because he knows that he's just bringing them in constantly. So then Prime makes the adjustment, doesn't try and enter the pocket as much. And then there's more pulling out of this offense from Romero. Great job mixing up the, the takedowns there as well. Um, and then just the knowledge to show, to avoid the up kick, you know, and, and, and dictates the pace. But he won it on the feet. You know, it wasn't the ground game that came into play. We, we talked about that going in with the ground game of Romero counter, the, the knowledge that Prime Boxer has from previous striking uh, combat games, but it was dictated on the feet. Romero doing a great job timing Boxer, baiting out offense with fakes and returning with his own and, you know, getting away from the one two when he didn't need to use it throwing the hooks in hook range and yeah just good game knowledge from from romero and just capitalization like you said on every mistake and consistently doing damage in all those positions as well yeah romero's like a python he, he he's you can't you can't hit him but he strikes hard and it's uh, he was in no danger that fight literally he got hit a couple of times and in a championship fight against prime boxer that's unheard of craziness I want to see. I want to see someone. I need to see some kinetic NRG or, or some crooks or some Zayaf or some, I don't know. I need to see someone. I, I, Romero is incredible. I cannot wait for the future. I can't wait till he defends his belt again. He could be one of the most dominant champions we've ever seen, uh, so far in he's UFC the, four. Is the only person undefeated still? No right doubt. Now I think and in the whole league. Did Did Dabikin drop his title? Last week, I believe he did, right? I think he did. And Papa Doc took that off him, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I'm Romero pretty sure. is the only... I mean, I mean, if you discount people who are like maybe 2-0, and o, just showing on the scene, but anyone competing from the start of the season, yeah, Romero is the only one still undefeated there. So, yeah, going to be tough, but we'll see. I mean, if Kinetic wants that shot, I'm sure the matchmakers will give it to him. I would love to see that fight again and uh yeah we'll see we'll see i mean it was a great fight the first time around i would be very very interested to see if uh kinetic would be prepared to make any adjustments if he's seen romero if he treats him differently you know going into the fight maybe with more respect uh i'm being corrected that papa doc is a ps4 player clearly i've been doing this for three years and still have no idea what i'm talking about so <laughs> <laughs> No hey problem. man i'm here to agree with you there we go right okay guys well thank you very much for joining us for another esfl um Hang on, my phone's being weird. Um, that is it, ESFL 92 in the books. ESFL will be back tomorrow night where the Xbox champion will defend their belt. Please do enjoy the UFC this evening. Ortega vs. Zombie, who have you got, Rob? I got uh, the Korean Zombie. All right, by any particular technique? Knockout. Knockout, right. Okay, you do realize Ortega absorbed more significant strikes than anybody ever in the UFC fight against Max Holloway, and he didn't get knocked out? True. Okay, that's fine. That's why it's a bold prediction. <laughs> Just fine. Um, maybe he dips and throws. Maybe he's weak. I don't know. It'll be a tough fight. Um, he's I, I, hairless, Bay. I, I, I'm going to take Ortega. I think he taps him late. Mm. third fourth okay. fifth round i think we'll see um but right, we'll you know see. what it doesn't matter maybe he'll maybe zombie will knock him out in the first round and i will eat my words 100 percent. i'll eat that humble pie um i will see you guys oh, i will see you guys we will see you guys tomorrow uh me and rob shan't be here but there's more content from the esfl and the esfl network throughout the week wednesday next week as well there will be a card so you've got tonight is done sunday wednesday and me and rob will be back next saturday please do stay tuned as well here and on the youtube obviously if you go back to the youtube you want to watch something maybe something to help you you know fall to sleep at night the esfl i've heard is very calming you can you know enjoy uh the, the all the subsequent cards that have gone past on the youtube there but uh, stay tuned as well for for big things hopefully there's a big announcement coming from the esfl soon we can't say any more than that and you know maybe it'll uh be very very well it'll be, it'll be as long as we get the announcement off it's going to be good so we'll see but anyway can't wait everybody enjoy yourselves enjoy the fights tonight have a good rest of your weekend any last words from you rob no, sir. No words for me, except I love you guys and have a great day and enjoy USC. And thanks for tuning in. And ESFL, I love you as well. And Balian, I love you too. All right, guys. Have a good evening. Take care. We will see you tomorrow. Have a good night.